Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield um, Select Board Board of Health meeting for July 31st, 2019 at uh, 6 p.m. here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, welcome everybody. This uh, meeting will be recorded. Um, and if you come to a mic, please just state your name and if you're a resident in the town or um, what you're affiliated with. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have uh, one of the first agendas would be to approve the minutes of the previous meetings, which we have uh, May 28th and July 17th. I make a motion to approve uh, May 28th and July 17th um, as presented. I have a second. I'll second that. Any further discussion on those? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Great. Aye. Um, did you do the 17th as well? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Yep, together. I heard the first. Because um, there was no corrections, as far okay. as I can see. Yeah. So um, I, I just wanted to say a couple of things before we get started. We have a hearing at um, 610 for a liquor license uh, hearing. And um, a couple of the items I wanted to mention was, um, first, the, the passing of, of Michael Kittredge, um, the founder of Yankee Candle. Um, he was an amazing man. Um, I know I knew him a little bit. Um, just growing up in the area, but the impact that he left on our community, not just our town, our, our region, our state, um, all across the country, really, um, but the impact here in Deerfield um, and Waitley and uh, Conway and all, all, the, all the communities right around South County um, were immense. They, um, um, he was an amazing businessman, and the way he carried his, um, built his business and just kind of the aura that was built around that just really was contagion on the people that were around him. They, they always wanted to strive to do better, keep the place clean, um, take care of their customers, be that unique business that no, nobody else was. You could get things there you couldn't find anywhere. Um, and then just the steward of being a good, um, you know, s s uh, citizen and being civic minded in the community and um, just the countless donations that he's made to South, South Deerfield Fire, South Deerfield EMS, um, the police department, um, in, in um, telling, t you know, in striving in the, in the employees to, to serve their community. Um, I remember people would just run from there when the bell would toll or, you know, there'd be an accident or something and people would leave from Deerfield, you know, from Yankee Candle to come and take care of people in need. Um, it doesn't happen as much in businesses nowadays, but he always encouraged, you know, civic engagement. Um, and just for all the things that he's done for our community, we'll, we'll truly miss him. And um, anybody else want to say anything on that? No. Nope. That okay. Good. It's uh, you know, I met Michael when they were building the store originally. Oh, I was store. working cruiser, and I pulled in and asked what he was up to, and he says he's building the store to sell candles. I says, you really think people are going to buy that many candles? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yep. And, but from that day on, every time I met Michael, he always acknowledged me because I was one of the first ones to touch base with him. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was great. It is really nice. Yep. Um, I also just wanted to thank uh, Kevin, all the crew at the DPW, police department, um, everybody that was out last night dealing with the, all the trees and wires and everything that came down and very isolated depending on where it was but a mess where it was so you know a lot of roads got um, shut down and lost power and everybody worked really quickly and all through the night today cleaning up all that stuff so thank you very much for understanding and pulling together and helping and thank you Kevin and all the crew that did everything last night um, I just want to say thank you to um, George Emery of the Sunderland DPW he called Kevin and mm. offered to help um, Natalie's office called, Natalie yep. Blaze's office called, Joe Cumberland's office called, and to make sure we were all set. Um, Chris Collins wanted to know if we needed anything published on our FCAT or how we yep. could help. And it just, it's really nice that our community comes together, even though this was a relatively isolated event for the people that were involved and the trees that were involved. It was yeah. horrible. We lost a lovely old sycamore tree up by. Mill Village, you mm -hmm. know, a couple hundred year old tree, and there's a couple other really big trees that got nailed, and plus a lot of other stuff that's down. And mm. it was really scary there for yeah. a section of our town. So um, 
I just want to say thank you, and it mm -hmm. was really nice. Kevin, I appreciate, make sure that DPW really knows how mm. much we appreciate them. It was really hot and humid and how awful to be out, you know, chainsawing and trying to get the roads open. But the police, everybody worked together, and mm -hmm. uh, the EMS made sure that there was alternative routes in case somebody had a health emergency. It was really wonderful that everyone works together in an emergency. Yep, absolutely. Um, let's see. And the, uh, just speaking of road closures, we had gotten a notice. This, you know, if you happen to go down to Northampton uh, Thursday, they'll be paving part of Bridge Road, so they're going to be directing traffic. You know, I know that's a lot of people take that loop through the back to um, Cooley Dick or something, but um, I think between Hatfield Street and Juniper Street, they'll be paving that section tomorrow. So it's actually uh, next Thursday, I believe. Oh, next it's Thursday. Say August, I believe. Oh, August eighth. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so you've got a little time. <laughs> to plan another route. Um, and with that, I think um, I'm going to read this notice of public hearing. And oh, we'll I just want to do, do a, oh. a Board of Health update. Um, if you are bitten by a tick, our tick, um, we are, our new July 1st year starts, so there's plenty of tick tests available. So please send in your tick tests. It's on the, um, um, you know, our website. And the mosquito numbers are up. We're, getting, we're being trapped in town. But um, so far, there's no West Nile disease and there's no triple E here. It's in the eastern part of the state and there's some out in the western part of the state. But here in the valley, there's not anything at the moment. Um, I also just wanted to say if you did not get Adam Sokolowski's um, um, damage report uh, that was sent out under our new RAVE system, please take five minutes in the next week or two to sign on to the RAVE. Um, it's our new alert system. It's taking place of code red. Mm -hmm. It's half the price and gives us more flexibility. So um, it's really worth switching. I know it's a pain to sign up again. It's not but even. It takes less than five minutes. You can well, do it on your app on your phone. Super easy for people. Some of Please us are not it. really that swift. <laughs> but unless, unless you're an old guy and well, it takes yeah, a little longer. I, I know. <laughs> but we can help. it still is not that long. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to be connected with your cell phone and your and a mm -hmm. text messages in this this past couple days or last night was a, was a perfect example. Isolated road closures. You need to know if you were going somewhere where not to drive and, and how to get home, it, whatever. So you yep. get alerts. Yeah, very helpful. And it's very, very important. So if you did not get a call, you are not signed up. So please take the, make the effort to sign up. Great. OK. okay. Now we can go. Well, we'll head off. Uh, so <laughs> notice of public hearing. Notice is uh, hereby given in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 138 that, Deerfield, that the Deerfield Select Board, acting as a local licensing authority, has received an application for a change of LLC manager, change of LLC ownership, change of LLC interest, change of pledge, change of manager for the annual on-premise general all-alcohol beverage license from the uh, from the Tavern Sports Bar LLC located at 2C Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. In accordance with the aforementioned provisions, the licensing authority of, the, of said town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing in the main me meeting room uh, of the Municipal Office Building at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass on Wednesday, July 31st, 2019 at 6.10 p.m. So we'll open the meeting and um, invite you up. So. Welcome. Chrissy, just you yeah, have to introduce up, yourself. How are you, Robert? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for coming. Solutions in plain English. I'm his attorney. Great. Um, I've actually been training and managing, assisting with the management of the bar for quite a while, getting to learn the ropes and getting his TIP certification. And, yep, great. And, deciding that he really does want to do this after all. So, <laughs> step. so the application's yeah. complicated because he's taking over the limited liability company as opposed to just buying the assets. He's buying the company that owns the assets. Okay. Um, the application packet, I think, has in it everything that you need. Yes. I, um, I, I looked through it as yep. far as I could tell it we was. We reviewed it. Yeah. Um, so I, if you have any questions, fire away. Yeah, just uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about the business and what you'd like, you know, what you plan to do. And uh, so, you know, Chad and Kara did a lot to clean the tavern up 
well, after it works up, you know, they changed it and made it more enjoyable for everybody to be welcome at. Yep. Um, I just want to keep going with that direction. You know, we're going to update the front of the building, you know, make it look a little nicer and nice. continue cleaning okay. it. We put central air in so it's not 100 degrees in there anymore. Great. And in the winter, it'll actually have heat now. And <laughs> just continuing with the updates to the actual space itself and just making it you know, more enjoyable to relax and That's have wonderful. a beer after work. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So. One of the things that's helped is that, as you know, the building's under new ownership, and the new owners have done a ton of work, especially with the basement and cleaning up the infrastructure. So yep. that's made it They've a lot more viable just too. Just great. Yeah. So they got a lot more plans. Do they? Yep. Good. So yeah, they've be good. been wonderful. It's all all forward motion. Good. That's good. We're excited. Well, you yeah. have your tips training. That's always a major, huge yeah. concern really for me. Um, so I appreciate that, um, and that's usually my big thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the existing systems are. I think the you know I did the license before. I remember. Yep. And uh, it's sort of continuing in the same upward and onward. Good. <laughs> right. Thing, so. We're also requiring all of our bartenders to give you SIP, tip certified and maintain it. So. Great. That's in the process of. Everyone's almost done with it. So. Great. That's good. Yes, good, good. that makes me really just happy. So yep. we Thank secure you. the hours of operation yeah, yeah. and all that? Yeah, can we confirm the hours? I just want to, because then sure, yeah, that's what I was saying. reading what them here. What, what so we have for listed What I have hours? listed here was um, Monday through Sunday, 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's good. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. The, so the previous license will be active until the new license is... Yes. So yeah, he's not actually going to be the manager or owner until the, you 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 do the approval at the town level. Right. Then it goes to the state. The ABCC reviews it. Yeah. They approve it. They send it back to the town, and then you issue the new license. So until that happens, and the whole deal ultimately closes, he's not. He's just an employee. He's just an assistant. Okay. Um, the same management will be responsible until that actual turnover takes place. So. Okay. Right. And no change of the license premise, like in terms mm -hmm. of the establishment. It's the same. It's the same, same, same setup. Same, same setup. Yeah. Okay. I make That's a motion good. to approve this license. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No public comment. So uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for much. coming in. Appreciate it. And good luck. Thank you. And we won't have a signature on that until something comes back, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, That's, yes, correct. Great. That gets done on that just throw electronically. Yeah. Oh, sure. A copy? Yep. That's in here. Kevin, thank you. Hey, how are you? Hello. Oh, you have Good. to sign the application form, though, Trevor, right? Oh, right here. Yeah, where, okay. the, where the sticky is, yeah. Yep. We'll you are the that. licensing authority, yeah. Thank you. Oh, me, and this is my birthday. What? I'm going to there for you. Um... Uh, September 18th. Ah, nice. Uh, little birthday celebration. Good. And you as well. Oh. Oh, cool. What is this? It feels heavy. Welcome, really Mr. Attractive. Harris. How are you? Doing well. Good, good. So, Chris Harris from Eastern Avenue in South Deerfield. So, what I wanted to do is I promised um, a few months ago you approved uh, the placement of a signs at either end of Child's Cost Road, yep. um, historical memorial signs. And I said I would come back with the final um, materials of construction and yes. update, et cetera, as things kind of took shape during yep. the summer. Um, so what I just want to do is briefly summarize the commemoration event That'd that be will great. be around the unveiling and a little bit about the details of the final sign design okay. and materials of construction just so that everyone's clear before sure. I pull the trigger on ordering them because it's four-week lead so, time and it's yeah. pretty costly. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> so very briefly, the handout, I'll read directly from it in terms of the status of the event. I, as much as this is the 75th anniversary of my uncle's death, on the battlefield in Holland after jumping the day before into Holland. Um, I wanted to make it something bigger for the community in terms mm -hmm. of a World War II commemoration event in general. So that's the concept here. It's not really about 
the sign and the unveiling, that's a subset of the whole event, okay. uh, open to the public. And September actually comes in an 18 month window where all the major changes and shifts and go forward happened in World War II. So it's actually okay. a good place yeah. to have a commemoration event in terms of the timing between the beginning of 44 and the August of 1945. So okay. that's the concept. Great. Um, and so, so in terms of status on the event, um, we have a preliminary schedule of events drafted and it involves an hour of formal program mm -hmm. of music, of, uh, of talk, uh, speaking um, and, um, and tribute and then an hour of socializing with food and beverages afterwards. So that's the basic concept of it. Yep. It's set for late afternoon, 4.30 to 6.30 on the 18th of September, uh, which is a Wednesday. The sun actually goes down at 7 p.m. So we've got okay. daylight and it works out okay. that way. Um, key thing is it'll be at the intersection of Child's Cross Road and Routes 5 and 10, officially at 373 Greenfield Road which is owned by the Kolokoskis. I've met with them and they've been gracious to support in terms of the use of the lawn areas, both okay. for a tent and chair setup, um, probably two tents, one for food, beverage, one for actual you know, seating for yep. the formal program, et cetera, sure. and podium. And then the back area, parking cars. So right. that's, that's very important to get yeah. cars off the road. Right, right. And so that was really generous and they, they they're convinced there's not a water issue, there won't be a moisture or softness issue, et cetera. And so I talked with uh, Chief Chirk about the traffic and parking issues. Yep. He seems to think that everything's fine for now. He okay. just wants to talk to me two weeks before the event. So okay. we set up the 3rd of September to go through details. At that point, I might have a better idea how many people would actually come, Right. which is the big wild card here. It could be 50, it could be 250. You don't we don't know, know but right. I'll give you an update on that and what I'm trying to do to find that out. Okay. Um, I've talked to Gary at Berkshire Brewing Company in terms of supporting this event, um, and, uh, and he's in support. He knew I was coming before the select board tonight, and, um, and he and I agreed to talk and iron out details afterwards okay. because he obviously has the expertise and the certified servers, et cetera, to deal with the event, Right. whereas I as an individual do not. Right. So, um, and then the VFW post 3295 is confirmed for the color guard. Right. Um, and I've got outreach at Frontier Regional School and Deerfield Academy to get their involvement on music, mm -hmm. their involvement in speakers, as well as history students that okay. are generally interested to show up. That's um, great. And oh, so, Chris, that's so, so nice. So it's going to take time in the summer to sort that out since nobody's in session right now, but, sure. but we're on it. Um, I've gone to three veterans launches in the last two weeks to try to get the word out and to start getting a sense of interest level. And then we'll keep following up. They have weekly luncheons in Northampton and Greenfield and monthly in South Deerfield, just to try to get people raising hands. And yeah. especially for any veterans that need transportation that want to come to this event, mm -hmm. then we'll figure that out right in the last week or two okay. and make that happen. Um, and so, and then I'd reached out to FCAT and I'm in contact with local newspapers already and I'm sure that'll start taking shape in terms of getting the word out yeah. in the next, we're, we're seven weeks out, so. Right. FCAT would be willing to film this, I'm sure. Yeah. And, 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 and put it on our cable, so that would be lovely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So that's the, one of the discussions is who's yep. going to film and mm -hmm. what do we need between yep. them or somebody out of the Academy or what have you. we're certainly supportive of that. So yep. you can that's say great. you have select board support. So j just, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time, but just mm -hmm. in the status of the sign yep. is the verbiage and the design is finalized and it's in front of you. Um, you'll know a couple of things were corrected in terms of or, or optimized in terms of historical clarity. Okay. And, uh, um, just to make sure that it was very clear from a historical standpoint. And then uh, also, you know, you'll see that it's um, uh, positioned, you know, square, what's that called, justified on both sides. It just yep. looks more elegant, the it way does. this version versus what I came in here before. It looks really nice. It's really nice. Um, mm. It's very interesting. And um, then the, um, the materials were the key thing, because initially it started out as a bronze project, which uh, has advantages and disadvantages, yep. um, and certainly extremely costly. Uh, 
but it's not graffiti proof <laughs> either. So there's right. issues like that that are downsides of it. So uh, we've researched and this is the material we've come up with. Um, a solid composite panel, it'll be a half inch to three quarter inch thick. Wow. It's, it's nice. fire retardant, moisture uh, impervious, resistant to UV, which is very important. Right. Um, scratching, you know, physical abrasion by salt and, um, and anti-graffiti on top of it. Nice. And so it'll be a pretty sophisticated and that's why the lead time is long in terms of the lamination right. uh, process for the printing. Um, but I think it's the way to go, and I'm pretty encouraged. And that's just a sample. That's, that's really nice. That's got some weight to it. That was put on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, nice. Um, and then we're going, and Kevin and I have discussed this with two inch aluminum poles that are okay. eighth inch thick in terms of metal all the way around. Um, so I think that will be proper anchorage for this, you know, in terms of strength, durability, wind resistance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, and it's factory coated, so it should stay from anti-corrosion for a while, right. at least. Um, and you won't and have the, the interaction between the two metals either, you know, bronze and the aluminum. So Yeah, we won't have that right. in this case, setting up yep. an anode cathode situation exactly. that would be a little dangerous. Yep. Um, but uh, from a corrosion standpoint, yep. and we'll probably go with stainless steel um, bolts, et cetera, to, just to be safe. Yep. Um, so. So we have previously, a couple of weeks back, reviewed all the materials and the installation, and kind of we have a game plan. Okay. And I think, it, I think the, the signs will go up um, by Friday the 6th of September. So that okay. we're totally in time to finalize any landscaping for where we had to put the poles in, et cetera. Yeah. That's great. Um, what I did was I went over and I spoke with uh, the Melnicks, who live right there in the corner. Yeah. Um, obviously, that, that pole, that area right there is part of the town layout, but common courtesy, right. uh, I was just going and talking with them. Um, they are 110% uh, in favor of this. Right. Um, we spoke about, you know, briefly what we're going to do is we're going to remove the existing pole because it's pretty well beat up and so is the sign. Um, with that being said, that small bush has to come out at the same time. Again, I, you know, would you like that moved to somewhere else? You know, would you like to, and they're like, no, 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 don't worry about it, just rip it out. Um, so the town, we would be replacing the post and, this, and reusing the sign. Okay. Um, and then Chris is bearing the um, financial of everything else. Okay. Um, as far as, you know, the digging for the posts, uh, pouring of the concrete, coal line yards. Um, I'm very impressed. Yeah, me too. It's, it's really, really, really nice. It's really nice. It's no, beautiful. A lot of work. No and I, I think it's so interesting. This so as far as highway is concerned, we're 110% we're behind this. We'll okay, do whatever right. we need to do. Well, I think it's wonderful because this is the kind of stuff we want people to appreciate for our 350th is, you know, yep. to have a lot of information out and history. So this is wonderful. So, a lot of work. so I, I hope those of you from the select board can attend. Of course. Yes. And so if you do have a select board meeting that night, uh, please start at 7 <laughs> instead of 6. <laughs> we, would. we sure would. We will. 7.15. I'm not sure what our date is on the yeah, 18th. Sure. There's nothing on the calendar. It's all right. Yeah, it won't so be. Uh, yeah, yeah. We yeah. haven't Look, scheduled that no, far ahead we'll yet. We'll definitely attend. I'm we'll, excited. We'll, we'll post it for 7 so that we can go. So any other yeah. questions or concerns? Yeah. Because Somebody otherwise. Somebody has a birthday that day, and we don't know whether she's going to be available. No, no, I will. Good. I'll be there. Good. It'll be a nice birthday celebration. Yes, it will be. It'll be a good party. Good. Um, There'll be sticky buns. <laughs> um, this is this is this is very it's very awesome. wonderful. You've done a really I, I mean, great job. I mean, this is a beautiful job, and it's really a class class act. So, I'm really excited about this. Thank you for doing such a great job. Good. good. This will really. I mean, I think it's a beautiful addition. Mm-hmm. So and it explains, I think it's so interesting where some of these names of the roads come from and stuff. So this explains Child Cross Road and, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, he's been there for so long. It came in 1709, the family, and how wonderful, how interesting. Yeah. And the settled in the whopping section of Old Deerfield. It's pretty interesting. It's great. It it's is. It's really great. So it's rain or shine, so yep. we're setting up for that. That's good. It's a one-shot deal. Sure. Okay. That's fine. So. Good. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. Yeah. So it's in my calendar already. Yep. In my phone already. That's good. I'll proceed with the purchase order. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm.
Well, I was going to sit here and wait for the electric, but I don't see anybody else here for that yet. So. Ah, yes. I, I don't know. Um, did, Lori, did Lori confirm that she was coming tonight? Yes. 6.45? Yes. Okay. A couple yep. of minutes. She, she'll probably come in a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah, she did. Okay. I did tell her 6.45. Did you, so. did you are you okay with her spots? Well, yeah, we should talk about all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why um, I want Kevin. Do we have yeah. authority to put something on the school no, property? No, I don't think so. No. no. It has to be school board, right? It's, it has yeah. to be school committee. And I yeah. think the school committee is going to bring this I'm up in, in our September. Town, yeah, I'm in our town. Oh, our parking location. Lot. Oh, yeah. Town yeah. Yeah, Leary Lot. Um, I want to make sure uh, we get that sorted out. Oh, yeah. I got to get the original warrant. I want to make sure that they'll actually warrant here. I have the big copy. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll wait for that then. Or we can move on to, we'll just move on to, um, we have a one day uh, wine and malt license for an event on um, August 8th at uh, Yankee Candle. That, if I can find that thing here. Chris, Harris. Chris will also do a, we'll have to do his with the thing later. Okay, great. So, um, do you have the liquor license for August 8th? I don't, I, I do. Know, I'm just trying to see where it's in. The, oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Is that the one? And also, Chris, Chris had, um, you didn't, I didn't. Yes. Here we go. Really Yes, and we'll do that event, right one, once he has that all set. Yep. And, um, okay. Um, Chris, did you want to talk about the one day liquor just briefly? He mentioned, I think he was going to have. Well, he's already applied for the license. So yes. I mean, I guess yeah, so I, what I did is I got all the liability set up. Oh, you did? On my end. So, yeah, I took out that policy a couple Oh, okay. Days ago. I didn't and know if you had to wait for the others, but oh, okay, no. you're so, good to go. So we've got everything done and it's paid for and issued and certificate of liability is there. Okay. And then um, the information on the event is very right. specific yep. Um, yep. and it's yeah. just the a only wine thing, and beer. Right. The only thing he just, as, as a, uh, uh, an individual, he has requirements of how he has to uh, acquire the beer to right. serve, but he's aware of that. that. And that's, that's right. That's why I'm working so, through yep. people that are like, in the profession. Um, then... Um, I make a motion to support this. Uh, this will be the one day uh, liquor, liquor license, license for September 18th. For September 18th. This is the one for Chris. Uh, yes, for, for Chris. Yankee. Yep, starting yep. for Chris. Yep. I'll second that. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Nope, that's okay. No, no, no. Let's, we'll just sign it. Um, all those in favor? Any other Aye. questions? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Get, uh, Gary's involved, so I'm signing Yep. Okay, so the next uh, one-day liquor license will be for, again, for the uh, Yankee Candle. They have an event for August 8th and 9th um, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. This, uh, this is their summer employee shop. Um, we we're hoping to add beer and wine, sample and serve by the glass. We have extended hours for this event both days. Invite only, invite only with passes. Normal business hours are 6 to 10. Um, have they done this before? I don't know. I don't think so. This would, so this would be a, a new event. Um, I don't know if they've done it last year or not. Um, you know, it, in fact, I'm, I'm not sure that you don't need a one day if you're not selling, to be honest, I believe. I don't, I don't think if you're just serving, you don't. But. Yeah, because I don't see anywhere that they're... Um, there's because nothing. basically they're just going to serve. It sounds. It looks oh, like they're just going to open. You know, they're going to sample and serve like yeah. I, I'm their okay own with staff. This. I'm okay with this. It's, just, I think this it's not a. It's but it's not a public event. I it's mean, not public, right? right. David? Okay. It's not but the like same it's liability right. issues. So we would do it, have, right? You know, you have to have your employees are drinking. Did they give you that, that Trevor? Did they, you have they've this got cert? liability. Do you have? Did you? Yep. Did you get a sort of liability with it? Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Next. So, um, take a motion. I'll make that motion that we approve um, the one day um, summer employee sample 8th and 9th okay. of no, August. From 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, so um, this will be our uh, Town of Deerfield special ballot election, um, ballot question election for September 9th, 2019. This is the warrant I'll read um, to either the constables in the Town of Deerfield in the County of Franklin. Greetings in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You are hereby directed and notify and warn the inhabitants of said town qualified to vote in elections to vote at the main meeting room at the town offices, uh, 8 Conway Street in the village of South Deerfield on Monday, September 9th, 2019 from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose, to cast their votes on the following ballot questions. Question one, shall the town of Deerfield be allowed uh, exempt from the provisions of, um, of Proposition 2 and 1 half, so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued for the purpose of funding the upgrading of the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility located at 150 Sunderland Road and a perpetuities, <laughs> I always get that wrong, uh, there too, including but not limited to um, planning, design, permitting, bidding, and construction, as well, uh, as well as all other costs incidental and related thereto, all as approved under Article 25 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting, yes and no. I think that's it. Um, so I have here a motion to. I make a motion to um, post this. I'll second it. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have we got any opinion from council on what the ballot will actually look like? Um, this, I think, is the question. Correct. So there's not going to be anything on there what a yes vote means and what a no vote um, means? I don't think we I can. I think we can. We can do we, a handout, I yeah. think. Well, what we, what we found was that we can. We can do the fact sheets. We thought originally we were told by council that we had to get town meeting approval to do that, but we don't. However, what you do have to have is an opponent and a proponent right. both write, you know, like a, an opinion or a, a statement of. Yeah. Yeah. Pro and against. Pro and against. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. um, so yes, Trevor and I did talk about that. And then the other thing that we are able to do is we're able to provide, you know, disseminate information, as mm -hmm. Carolyn said, a, a factual data, but nothing to influence any vote one way or right. the other. Right. Just facts on what what were, what the plan right. would be going forward, and the what cost, the needs like, are, and what the cost right. is. Right. I think maybe that's what we would want to drill down a little bit more on is what the, the long-term impact of the debt exclusion will be to the voters, and that, to the taxpayers. And that I have been, uh, several people have been working on trying to gather that information yes. and, and disseminate that. And, um, you know, we do have planned um, a 2000, um, a um, informational session, open house at the wastewater treatment plant on August 20th, and then another um, informational session on September 5th, and then the vote is September 9th. So um, we are actually going to talk about it, too, on mm -hmm. August 14th. Okay. Yeah, I think every opportunity we can to talk about <clears> it. And so we're going to do an initial overview on the 14th and see what questions emerge. We can get ready for So that we're ready for the open house on the 20th. Mm -hmm. And then we'll find out what the feedback is and any questions so that when we do our final um, thing. Oh, you know what? The fifth mm -hmm. is um, uh, we have to be at GCC on the fifth. Who does? Us at 7 o'clock. So maybe we can do this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, the, that's Kurt Wood. The assistant secretary is coming out. This is the you know, countywide meeting for, he's um, giving us money for the 800 system. Oh, that's the 800 meeting again? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, definitely want to be there for that. Yeah. So we can do it a little earlier. Yeah, yeah. so um, how about five mm -hmm. here yep. on the 5th? Okay. So and hopefully all questions will yeah, be we'll answered Yeah, we'll have the 20th, we'll have the 14th, the 20th, and the 5th. That's fine. Yep. Okay. I think that'll be good. All right. All right. Sounds good. Um... Um, there were some folks that had asked about whether that was going to appear, this information was going to be on the agenda, and we did tell them that it was, and they may think it's going to be later because of the timing of the schedule. So I just wanted to let you know oh, if they the, come in. Oh, yeah, I'm happy to listen have, and talk. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm just saying you might have some people looking for sure, that information. Sure, of course. Thank you. No problem at all. 
I just I just want to make sure that we keep drilling down on this. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we just want to make sure all people's questions are answered. And so we need to uh, uh, appoint members to the CIPC. Um, I see names of uh, Ken Cutterback, Rachel Blaine, and Carolyn Shores Ness. So I would um, make a motion to appoint Ken Cutterback um, from the Deerfield Elementary School Committee, Rachel Blaine from the Planning Board, is that right? Or Correct. Yes, Planning oh, Board. Planning board. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn Shores Ness, the Select Board, um, to the uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. All right. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we also would be appointing town building, buildings advisory committee uh, appointments, and that would be um, Julie Chalfont, Deb Deborah Dacious, Bruce Hunter. I, I thought Bruce was not do doing anymore because he moved out of town. He's moved no, out. Bruce Hunter. Yeah. Oh, so I don't he, know. He said no. he wasn't going to be on anything. No, that's not correct. He's going to he re, he re, uh, believe he resigned from the finance committee, so he was no longer also going to be on the personnel board. But he wants to continue. Yeah, on I thought he was still oh, doing he this. said he would still do this. Okay. I believe. Okay. I mean, he's been very active in the, yeah, in yeah, the he project, and he was in today to talk to me about it. Oh, great. So oh, okay, so, okay, good. Well, good. I mean, not good. about being on the committee, but about right, the project. About the project. <laughs> so okay, I assume good. he does. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's appoint him, and he can yeah, just resign. Yeah, right. Uh, and so, just to clarify, it's Julie Chalfont. Uh, Deborah Dacious, uh, Bruce Hunter, Carol Morrow, John Pachurik, Kevin Scarborough is ex officio. Uh, I think we should put John Pachurik Jr. Junior, thank yeah, you. Just oh, to yes. clarify. Yep. Yes. Is it Junior? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I'm not paying attention. Um, any, any further questions on that? Comments? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And then, uh, uh, Lori, hi. We can, Lori's here. We could go do Lori. Yeah, sure. That's fine. So Kevin can go home. Yes. Uh, you ready? Yeah, yeah, come on up. Come on up. Sure. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so, do you want me to? Yes. Yes, come on up. State your name, what you're here for. Um, let me give you some. I gave that, Lori, I gave them your email that you had sent out before to everyone. It kind of gave a summary of what you had done already. Mm. So I gave them that in the packet. I don't know if. What you'd, uh, it was probably something. No, maybe not this. I didn't. Oh. I don't know if you'd sent that. I didn't get anything, so I had put it in. <laughs> Thank you. My research project. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Oh, I want a copy of your research project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to send it to you. I love Thank you. Um. So welcome. State your name and so where you're from and what you're doing. Lori Busada, Deerfield Energy Committee. Um, presenting some research on electric vehicle charging stations. <sighs> Where to begin? So um, I have done some research and made uh, a lot of phone calls, um, contacted the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, and they gave me some leads, and um, Alyssa LaRose in Greenfield also had some information. And then the best contact was um, David Purrington at Deerfield Academy. He is the person in charge of the charging stations there. And they have had charging stations since 2014. Um, they have three, and they're applying for, I think, four more. Um, I also talked with um, Stephanie Ciccarello, who's the sustainability coordinator in Amherst. Isn't that a nice luxury? They have a sustainability <laughs> coordinator. So um, here's what I found. Um, there is a, a funding program right now through DEP called Mass EVIP. I put an application in your packet, so just so you see Electric what Vehicle like. Incentive Program. And I did manage to talk to somebody there who told me that the Leary lot would qualify as a workplace charging program. They require 15 employees. And I asked, can it be collective in the downtown? And she said yes. So, so that was good. Um, and I 
am on the agenda for both school committee meetings um, to talk about the possibility of one there. Um, as far as Old Deerfield, I don't know a public spot there. So, I mean, we have to own the lot mm -hmm. in order to apply for these grants. Right. So, and then the other grant is the Eversource um, Make Ready, they call it. And they also want right up front to know where your location is and a drawing of the location. And they would provide the infrastructure, so they would run the wires, you know, the electricity to the site. Um, we would have to pay an electrician or have our own electrician do the actual hookup installation. Um, and I am not sure whether or not the location, the Leary lot is, needs a whole new service or if they would just take power from the town hall, the police department. I'm not sure about that. But I did get a phone number and a person's name um, who, um, uh, from um, Eversource. He lives in Shelburne Falls. So he might be willing to just drive by before we go through the whole application process. I, I asked him, you know, can I, can I just run this by you before we do the whole process? Anyway, so that would be um, the infrastructure part. And then if you notice in the beginning, in the middle there where it says um, choose a charger, there is a Massachusetts statewide contract that lists vendors and manufacturers. Um, two of them were vendors were recommended, actually one of them especially by Amherst and Darefield Academy. And it seems like the manufacturer that's almost the only one right now is ChargePoint, which is pretty common around here. Um, so we w I would have to, we would have to get quotes. I don't know if because of it's, it's a town project, we would have to put out a request for quotes to multiple vendors. Is that yeah. that right? One? Unless it is on the state bid, which I think is what you're saying. There's a state contract there for is these a state people. Contract. So if you use these people, you can use it right off the state con. You can use something right off the state contract, but you, if not, you would have to go out to bid. Oh. I mean, depending on this, the amount, I would imagine. That's why it's on state contract, so you can yeah. save. It saves you having to go out and find right. separate Oh, quotes. that's terrific. Yeah, um, if it's already on combi, so you can use that vendor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, well, that's great. Okay. Yep, it, it is definitely on combis. I don't know why the Metropolitan Area Planning Council person, maybe because they were doing a a bid for multiple communities right. at the same much time. Larger, yeah. Yes. They, yeah. Would, they, they would, So that simplifies things quite a bit. Um, oh, okay, yeah, she's here. I know we're early. Um, <laughs> oh, boy, um, I'm right on time. They, um, <laughs> they probably on atomic they, clock they time. would get a better price because they're doing so many. I mean, they're not doing one. They're right. Doing um, from the, the statewide city. contract, too, there is a bit of a discount even for um, one to five. Let's see if I. Yep. Yeah, but they, the Metropolitan Planning Commission is multiple towns, right? Including they, Boston. They did a bulk so they, purchasing yeah, thing. Yeah, they'd be huge. I would say that the, um, so they'd want a better price. Is 15%? Is that, what to put down there? that says 12. If you're asking me for just for visual input, yeah, I don't have any glasses. Yeah, mine are. I should have brought them too. This is 12. So actually, Emma, you got to introduce yourself. <laughs> and I am Emma Sweetland <laughs> on the Energy Committee. She and I thought I was on time, but clearly I'm very late. No, we're, no. <laughs> we're being efficient, we're being yeah, efficient so. tonight. Yeah. Wow, you are. I'm impressed. Congratulations, Trevor. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to keep trying. Oh, so, um, okay. So, um, yeah, the number that I put here for the cost of a charger can be 12% less. So that's, that's a good thing to know. Um, this one. Well, actually, so, we're going to share. Can I ask a couple questions? Of course. Are you still going? No, um, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, you know, I know you've been working on this for quite a few months, trying to, you know, put together surveys and um, and get this rolling. So I, I, um, I'm glad you're here to give us an update on where you're at and what we're doing. Um, and I just want to, I don't know enough about this, so I'm curious, um, you know, how much it costs, uh, who owns it, who maintains it, um, 
who pays for electricity going in? Is there a meter kind of thing? And what are other towns doing? What's the FERCOG have to say? Is there a more of a regionally? I know that I was talking with John Edwards and Waitley, and he has been an issue, and he's been talking about wanting to, you know, progressively get many of these around all over the place. So um, would we be working with other communities to do a regional thing, or is this just that we're looking for one in our town and that's it? Like. Um. Or is there? Yeah, a, I those mean, are I know the questions. You've been leading this charge, <laughs> and I'm wondering should we get so, more people involved to get it? So know? the um, the the places in the area that I know that have charging stations is Greenfield. Yep. Um, one behind Wilson's and one behind the town hall are free and will continue to be free. This is on their website. The new ones in the town garage are a um, dollar twenty-five an hour, which I think is on the higher side um, and it says while you're charging so if you stay there and your charge is done then you don't pay any more for the charging but you pay for the parking fee um, Amherst the DPW person is on vacation so I haven't gotten numbers from him um, I think so far their chargers have been free also and Deerfield Academies are free so Free is a relative term, like free, free to the, the people plugging in. Yeah, yes. so the town buys it. Yes. So I'm wondering how much that costs the town and, you know, how much that costs to just, I'm curious, how much does it cost to charge your car? Trevor, okay, you so, are dead on all the important questions. Oh, good. So, I just wanted to announce that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to draw your attention to. <laughs> oh, great. No, okay, so, so if you look where it says cost to the town, um, Minus the 12% for the cost of the charger. Um, if we got the grant, we'd pay 40% of that. And then there are some other fees, as you saw, that I found out from um, Amherst. Um, and then if you go down to where it says annual, um, it, there's a software fee, $280 per port or per head. Um, we'd buy, probably buy charging stations that had two, two cords. Makes yeah. Makes sense, yep. And then Based on the numbers that David Purrington has in Deerfield Academy, he estimates they're paying about $200 for electricity at 25 cents a kilowatt hour. So if we, if we looked at something like that, then the annual um, amount of money that we would need to pay is about $500. So I played around with some usage and you know if we if we were to charge a dollar an hour we can see where projected usage you know these are different mm -hmm. um, scenarios four hours a day times 150 days times a dollar an hour it gives you six hundred dollars for income and then you could go up to you know I, I just came up, came up with 150 thinking at the school, but if we promoted it more and it would be on all the websites that list charging stations, you know, we could use a number like 300 days out of the year. Um, I mean, it could be used 365, but I just used some numbers to... Um, I, it's tricky to figure out how much you want to charge. And on the Greenfield website, they said that this is what we're doing for now. Um, mm, right. I, one thing that we could do is meet with um, the woman who teaches at the at Frontier and kind of convene a little the group of people who said that they would use a charging mm -hmm. station there and you know say so if we charged a dollar an hour is that totally all you know and, and would you not use it at all if we right. charge 50 cents an hour so I think we could set a, a charging fee that would cover our annual costs right um, but there would be upfront costs. And then how do we, you know, say there's four people that have cars, how do they decide who is allowed to park there? Is like the first come, first serve, or is it like, so? It is, but ChargePoint is the, um, well, that's how it is everywhere, so. Uh, and everywhere? Everywhere, yeah, sure. At, um, in the base of um, well, Crafts that, Avenue. And I see that as like a, um, an administrative nightmare for the for the superintendent no it's I no. mean no it so at the base of um, Crest Avenue in Northampton there is um two charge electric car charging and we usually you know beeline right there when we go to Northampton sometimes they're available sometimes they're not of course no but I'm thinking like for the superintendent if there's one in the school and so a student has it versus a staff has it or who decides who gets to there's, use it when you're can i speak to this? please yeah okay um 
there's going to be some social pressure. If there's four people who want to charge their car right. and one person plugs in at 8 o'clock yeah. and doesn't unplug until 3, mm -hmm. there's going to be there's going to be a little pressure on that person what to share. What if that share. person doesn't care? Well, no. <laughs> well, I, I'm just being that no, way. No, I, I understand. But, yeah, I just want to make I sure. I mean, I we, think they will. I, it sounds... If, do you, you, so, so, and I, that, it's, just you're supposed up. to unplug when you're done and move your car. How, how long does it take to charge up the battery? Well, um, the charge point machines say they give you 25 miles um, range in an yeah. hour. So depending on the kind of car you drive, um, we, you know, I drive a Volt. Mine gets about 60 in the summer and 45 in the winter, so a couple of hours, maybe three yeah. hours. And then you go out and you move your car. Yeah. Right. And, and there's going to, I mean, within a school community yeah. particularly, there's going to be real pressure to do that, to share. I mean... I Have you think with teachers lately? <laughs> yes, I'm a teacher. No, seriously, so from the response I got warning. to the survey, and um, I did get um, a number of people, like six or seven, who um, answered the, you know, gave me their email when I asked if they're interested in staying in touch about mm -hmm. energy issues. So, I, I mean, I think It'd it would be... It would be interesting to talk to them and Yeah, and it would be nice to have a, um, a meeting, and I what think... What the administration um, might feel about that, too, and who uses it and when, that kind of thing. Student yeah. versus faculty. Or can somebody pull in and park the well, car? Well, the student and walk comes in with an EV. That that's pretty cool. And I, I mean, one I think of the it's cool, but it's just um, it's it's not it's not uh, so much a democracy as it is well, as I'll, you park. I'll it tell down you the what I hall. trust. I trust that their environmental club will handle that. Well, <laughs> really, they have a. They it's have actually a, the the superintendent has got to handle it. So it's no, not I, the environmental club. I mean, it's club. a parking space. It's the superintendent that runs the school and the and the spot. So he needs to set the parameters of who uses it and when, but. I see you've got multiple hands. Oh, can I say one more thing? I'll sure. See? So um, at most places, too, they say mm -hmm. four-hour limit, and you get a ticket. Good. So, that's, yep. so there's ways around it. That's their, yeah, that would be the incentive to move your car. Good. <laughs> I mean, that would mean that yep. a police officer would have to take a drive by. Well, the yeah, superintendent could do that. Well, well I don't superintendent think he wants could. that task. But <laughs> anyway, there would be an enforcement like that, an incentive to move your car. Um, these are kind of questions you're going to get. So I just sure. want to kind of uh -huh. yep. no, get fair you guys thinking about them. This is going to become a move. Come on up, Steve. Also Come on up, Steve, because people can't hear you on the uh, on the TV from there. So, welcome. Um, because the cars themselves will tell you when you're fully charged, and, and uh, depending on, on the apps that you get, um, uh, they will also tell you. So this, you know, people will know. This is the uh, uh, Internet of Things, um, mm -hmm. and once you start hooking up uh, expensive vehicles to these things, and they. Um, you can ha they have apps. I don't know right. if, if if you get the real simple ones that charge nothing, then no. But once you start getting the fancier ones that ha that uh, well, we have to, that we have to get one with the software because we are required so, by the grant to collect so data usage. So if you usage. put the app on your phone, it'll tell you uh, all kinds of information about you know your car charge. So they, I think rapidly that would become a moot question of how they deal with it. But it is, I mean, it's a school. I think it's mm -hmm. something that you know it's a, a learn how and figure it out and. And it'd be something interesting for the uh, environmental, the group to actually uh, do, you know, study a mm -hmm. bit and figure out how that work might other, work best. Yeah, the other thing is, is that all the cars have a light up in their dashboard and it, it blinks when it's still charging and it's solid when it's not charging. So Very everybody visible. who walks by knows <laughs> that you're overstaying your welcome. Okay. Except my car's the opposite. Huh? Okay, <laughs> yours is the opposite. Oh, well, I think, anyhow. Trevor, you're what really if? only to be you're focusing okay? on the town yes. spot yes. anyway, Constable because that would have to go in front of the school folks, Correct. right? So yeah, it does. It's yeah. going, yeah, but I'm just trying to yeah. no, I just feed information if, yeah. so that you're prepared when you go for, for sure. before the school board what you're going to hear as well. So. Yeah, and so on the maintenance issue, I did email David Purrington again, and he said, um, I think I actually wrote it on here. Uh -huh. Don't, be, don't buy the them. warranty beyond the standard. Oh. Oh, I did write that on yours. Okay, good. Yep. Yeah, so that he said that, you know, they haven't had any issues at all, um, mm -hmm. and they've had them since um, 2014. So they do require you to put curb stops or bollards or something so that people don't drive into them. But he hasn't had any problem with the me machine themselves or any d damage to the machine. So okay. I want to just say that Carolyn's had her carry-all for a very long time. And when these get put in town, she's going to get herself an EV. I know. <laughs> <it>. <laughs>
<laughs> if we spill them, they look good come. for another year, M.A. <laughs> no. It's a car from the last century, but it's it still It is, going. I know. <laughs> so um, That's when you had little kids. <laughs> I know. We're in the second round. <laughs> Maybe while um, Kevin's here, I can um, check in about some... Um, I'm not going to say assumptions, that's rude. Um, some possibilities I, and whether it's realistic. So I, I, I think in DA and in Amherst, the, the town actually dug the hole for the charger. And, um, and at DA, they said somebody, um, John Graves from Graves Electric did an online training tutorial in order to be able to hook the, up the electricity. I don't know if that's something that, um, and then there's the, um, installing signage and painting the the parking lot to say EV only. So I don't know if those are all things that the DPW could take on or. Um, I'm sorry, I heard half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I come on up. Come, come up, say, okay. So, this is the list of things that I thought maybe DPW could handle. Putting in the signage, Sign I, I guess we'd problem. have to pay for yeah. that. Um, installing the chargers and the signs. So digs the trench for the post, um, and then get an electrician trained to be able to hook it up. That, this is what John Graves Electric charged at DA. Okay. Um, and then painting the pavement to say EV charging only. Okay, uh, the painting of the pavement shouldn't be a problem. You know, uh, the trenching, um, again, pouring the concrete or whatever for the post, I'm quite sure that's something we can do, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously right now, it, we're always behind the eight ball B, B sides paving and trying to take care of the cemeteries, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, that we, it's gonna have to look right. out over right. a, a period of time and say, okay, I'm looking at three to five weeks to be able to go ahead and get this accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, because unfortunately we have days like last night where all yeah. of a sudden now my next two weeks, <laughs> everything else is put off to a side and we're gonna be in cleanup mode. Right. So, exactly. and now that just puts me two weeks behind on everything that we've been trying to do for the, for the summer. Right. Um, when it comes to uh, the electrician, I mean, I'm not sure whose budget that's going to come out of. Right. Uh, but mine's tight. Yes, exactly. Very tight to the point that, I mean, I didn't go up at all on my budget. I so. Know. Do I we have a town electrician? No. That? No. No. Okay. No. okay. No. Dan well, Graves. No. I mean, John Graves. Graves. John. John Graves. Graves. Okay. So, <laughs> well, John, John knows how to do it. So, um, okay. Yeah, and so. Then, and then so. as far as, you know, go ahead and making up the markings of the pavement, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. So, so, okay. so Lori, Lori, does this, the. $2,000 to um, electrician costs, does that count as our match on this grant? Or is this grant um, match, it's 2,000 plus the 2,600 or 40% to us? Um, so the grant does not cover electrical, is, if that's what you're okay. asking. Yeah. yeah, they don't cover any of the, um, well, the installation costs. Eversource does though, right? No, they just bring the wires over. That's what their big generosity is? Yeah. Just bringing the wires over? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Well, so the yeah, last... <laughs> yeah. In the town common, they charge us $1,500 to run uh, two and a half feet underground. Oh, wow. So, okay, so it is so generous. Actually, they wow. are, yes, they're being very uh, generous. <laughs> okay. So um, what David Purrington said is the last 10 feet the electrician handled. Um, so I guess, you know, with... Um, I could reach out to that lo the local um, Eversource person and ask him to take a look at least the Leary lot, um, you know, before we even get to the school committee and right. see what, you know, what he thinks about that as a, a location as far as how far that he would have to, they would have to bring electricity and that kind of thing. Yeah, and I like could check with John Graves, I mean, yeah, John Graves also about if that's um, a real price and with per charging station, I think, it, you know, is what David said. So if we did one at the Leary lot and two at the school. Um, so there, I don't know. I don't know what other po possible funding sources there are, but we could look into that. Yeah, we should, we should take, you know, the next few weeks and, and look at where, um, where we could get funding if we, if we can't find other grant money. Um, we have to figure out you know, what, what budget we could do this out of, or is it, would it be a capital request at a special town meeting? We've got planning to figure out where and the Leary lot it would go. And um, actually, I, I have 
I know where that would have to be pretty much because but we'd it, have to figure it in with all the other plans we may have for that lot. Right. No, well, so. let me just give you one um, mm -hmm. uh, caveat. It, it needs to be accessible to a um, hand, handicapped person. Yep. So it would make sense for it to be adjacent to the mm -hmm. current handicapped spot so they can share the, um, what do they call Alleyway. it? Aisle? The aisle. Mm -hmm. The aisle for the um, yep. yeah, extra white aisle. Good yeah. pictures in here about. So if you have plans for that so that that would be moving, that obviously, I mean, that right. handicap space is moving, you, that needs to be considered. Right. Well, we, yeah, it has to be integrated into the complete streets, mm -hmm. you know, thought process. Because um, we're, we're trying to do the complete streets right. and make everything, I mean, w we have a handicap accessible issue. What's, what's your timing? Um, or your sense of a time. We're in it. the planning process. We're doing the prioritization plan right now. So it should be, I'm expecting to have another public or at least um, a stakeholder review of the preliminary plan within a couple weeks. Okay. So, so that's certainly within yeah, the and, time and, and frame and, that we And have. we are absolutely trying to take care of yeah. um, being handicap accessible. Yeah. So, that's so one the, of the, only, the only consideration here is, is that it does have, wherever that handicap lot uh, mm -hmm. parking space goes, this has to follow. It, it doesn't seem like it absolutely has to follow. It's just that's the easiest way to, to, to do it because uh, it, it can share the space. You can do it somewhere else, but it still needs to be a width that a handicapped person could mm -hmm. use it. Yes. So sure. it, make, it makes sense, most sense yeah. that way. But do you know, do you know Diana, if right. we can roll yeah. this into the complete streets? Um, well, in terms of planning, anything that has to do with the parking lot or parking downtown, no, 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 I think. I meant the grant. Oh, I don't know. What, I don't know what the timing is. What is the timing, Lori, on this application um, process? So I talked with a woman at DEP today. She says they still have funding, but they have a lot of applications on their desk. Okay. I said, so we need to get it in before the end of the year. She said, well, I can't really say. It's so, rolling, basically. It's rolling, rolling as long as funding is yeah, available. Right. Okay. So okay. there is a little bit of an impetus to, you know, get started on it. Um, it does say something somewhere in there that they want it installed 180 days from receiving the grant. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I always, when I spoke with Darius, he mentioned that the parking lot might not happen until right. next summer at the earliest. Right. So I maybe naively said that I would hope that with that piece of information that um, DEP might be a little flexible, knowing that it, we have a commitment to put it in, and it's part of a bigger plan, but the timing Can is a little tricky. Can you do multiple tricky. of these things? Like you could start yes. with this one and then come back and do a grant mm -hmm. for the other one? Yeah, yeah, I think it, I don't know that it would make us less eligible if we, no, I, I'm, Amherst has gotten funding from them a number of times. times, yes, and, and actually, um, so is David Purrington, and he actually said that he, are, he has the money in hand from DEP, but he's not sure that he can use it because he's, he's struggling with a um, handicap accessibility piece. Oh, so he's gotten multiple grants from them yep. as well. So, so we so could start with... Greenfield's gotten, because mm -hmm. they've done the garage and they, and they did the other yeah, ones. I'm not Who does the one that, sure that the like big is wide. from them, but... Is that separate yeah, from the town, or is I that Big Y? Pay, I think they pay for it directly, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big Y pay for it directly. Mm -hmm. I yeah, and, yeah, and um, and Hadley, uh, Northampton, the Big Y there also. And you see a lot of That's Tesla right. ones at the Pride, like down in uh, Hadley near Northampton. I don't a drive bank. a Tesla, so I don't well, pay attention to that. <laughs> right, like they have a, Great a, a gas has station a big, there. There's a huge bank, but I think those are all Tesla. They're just Teslas, I see. No. Okay. Okay. There's sp the yeah. Tesla specific. Tesla puts those in, pays for them, and, and they have their they, own website. And they have their yeah. own charge. Gotcha. Plugs. Separate item altogether. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Proprietary. Is it proprietary? You can't it's not totally. I, I think. I, yeah, Tesla. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, because there are other. I think the Bolt, not the Volt, also can. Uh, and there, I've heard conversions for some I of the other cars. I think there may be conversions, oh. but you have to buy yeah. a separate okay. plug. Or I'm mm -hmm. not. I don't this know. But it's okay. Tesla. It, 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 things, you know, electric cars are new. Things are changing yeah. rapidly, but it's yeah. improving and getting better mm -hmm. very, yeah. right. very quickly. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so I, I guess we could get some direction 
here, um, do you think it, we should go ahead and present the idea to the school committee, but then maybe move forward would, on this? Yes, or? I think so too, but I think, and they'd want to see, I, I, I almost feel like the Leary lot is like the, the first hurrah to, into this thing, and then you, you learn a lot through that process, and maybe by that time the school committee is ready with the work they have going on there to go again. Um, yeah, yes and no, and um, I, I agree with your, let's see what happens with one, but we know that there are users at the school, mm -hmm. so that's the only difference there. It's not a far um, walk. Our kids do it every morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you know when teachers pull into the parking lot. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> that's what I was saying. We're encouraging walkability. That's in this, right, in walkability. This town. That would be uh, awesome. So, so I, I think to say that we, we did have seven people say they're now driving yeah. EVs. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm. How so is that, how is that half out back? Is right. it doable right. in wet weather? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, um, so, I guess then my second question um, well, like, woo, I have limited time um, now that I'm at, at, when I go back to work. Um, mm -hmm. But the application is pretty straightforward. It just needs some things like, um, you know, the name of the person who's responsible for the monthly electric bill, that kind of thing, um, the Eversource account executive number. Um, I mean, I think I could start the ball rolling with the Eversource piece of it, and then. Um, I can help. Oh, great. I heard that. You heard that on live TV. Um, <laughs> and, and I also, knowing that we could um, talk, just talk with the procurement person, I could probably get a quote in writing from ChargePoint. I have the person. I've been communicating back and forth with them. So if we don't but, need to actually go out to... Well, what bid, I'm wondering, though, usually on the... There'll be a contract on combines that will have their pricing and everything. Yeah, there. it so does. I'll go, okay, so we can just pull that off. That That's the pricing that we would be able to use. I think we might want to get... If it's an open contract. I mean, I can go take a yeah, look at it. No, I okay. I just don't know if we need to... Um, I mean, it would be great to talk with David Purrington more if we need to talk specifically about exactly what they're, I think we'd still need a conversation to say, okay, so what actually actually comes with this? Because when I talked with the person in Amherst, that's the first time I got that information about, um, where do I have it written? You know, the, the contract, the, the st station activation and service fee, you know, oh, I didn't read oh, that anywhere. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, might yeah, be I see on what you're the saying. statewide contract, actually, I, I have to look closer. Yeah. Um, and the $150 shipping, so those, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times they'll have the contract and then they'll have all of these tabs that you have to go and they'll have all these okay, different kinds so, of things. So um, <laughs> we'll work with Diana. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uncombi buy stuff, sure. Okay. But it sounds like also about 10, I, I think I'm coming up with about $10,000 is what you're talking. I mean, if you're looking about. If we're looking for three chargers. Yeah. Give yeah. or take. I mean, with the pedestals and the, the costs of the electric and the porting and. I'm saying about 10K. So when we talk about our matching money tonight in our special mm -hmm. town meeting, that would be right. something we'd do. Because I don't know where we would. if it's 10, we you know, we'd have to be doing that. So when you're, when when you're talking about um, projected income, like um, uh, that is per station income, right? Yeah, I figured okay. it out per station. So if we have three charging stations, it's roughly $1,800. So in five years, it would pay for itself, basically. If yeah, if we are able to get um, people to use well, it using at, that, the, yeah. at that price, We're, uh, using the low number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, maybe what maybe. Do you pay at your house. I know we didn't. That we would didn't be really interesting. Quite to figure know. that out yet. Like right. You have it at your house. What was it? Char what does it cost to run it there versus? Well, we also on have, you have solar. We have solar, so <laughs> it runs right off. I could. You know, figure out. Or if you didn't have solar, right. yeah, we'll have to figure it, it we can hard. figure out. The, we can figure it, out how many kilowatts yeah, it uses, and so then it we could use a. Yeah, I'm sure they must that. have in the literature of the I vehicle imagine, like how right? much yeah. Yeah. kilowatt hours they use. For, oh, you know, a bit more so just for the school yeah. folks, when when Lori did the survey, you know, um, I think a, a good you know, like 75% yeah, of them said they would right use it. However, it they too, did desire it to be free. So yeah. well, of course, that was the superintendent's <laughs> concern um, <laughs> with that. So right. that would be a discussion point, I think, for the committee. Yep. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Because that's going to be a parking lot. And the Leary lot is one of the last things that I take care of, mm -hmm. which means 
I'm letting you know ahead of time <laughs> that if we have snow, I'm not going to listen to the phone call saying, why can't I plug in my car? So I'm so, letting you so know you're... months ahead. <laughs> so Don't you have anything? Bring a shovel. <laughs> 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 so Kevin, you're we're... saying that the income figure might be a little bit distorted in snowstorms. Well, what I'm getting at is it's, it's just going to be on our end. It's going to be one more thing that we have to do. I know. You know, and, and you know, unless you want to take out sidewalks. You take away sidewalks, nope. I'd be more nope. than happy. No, 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 We're not bartering here. Because, you know, Think about where, where I'm coming from. Is, is well, look, look on the bright side. When you put in the new sidewalks, it will be easier right. to clean. You have more time. <laughs> yes. Oh, because yeah. they're going to be heated. And we That's right. To That's <laughs> right. Solar That's a great sidewalk. idea. Perfect. <laughs> but you know, when, when we're done with our rounds, you know, depending on how many how many rounds we have to do. So let's just say hypothetically, we could do two rounds. So now these guys have been out plowing for 12 hours, and then I go ahead and I pull the guy out and I throw him into a, a sidewalk machine for the next seven. So. The guys there, basically three shifts mm -hmm. for a storm. And then we're going to ask people to go out and shovel around. Just putting it out now. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be a problem. Um, one I other think that should be part of our publicity. I mean, you know, in other words. Bring your own shovel. <laughs> no, it should be part of Either our budgetary if you, if you want discussion. To use it, bring your shovel. <laughs> I'm all over that. Yeah. I mean, because we can get the lot done, but, you know, like I said, as far as, you know, going around. But it is. But Kevin and I have been talking that over the next year or two with these plans that we are making about adding, you know, these kinds of things, which are a benefit to the community and the community uh, members want. That we're going to have to look at that in terms of the mm -hmm. public works budget and how we can um, take care of these public spaces, you know, if if we can and how we can. Mm -hmm. And we're going to contract it. Um, so one question to anticipate, uh, well, Darius did send me a, a long list of questions, um, including costs and maintenance, but so does the town own the Frontier parking lot? Mm -mm. No. no. Okay. It's under no. control of the school committee. I just had a thought that I haven't even talked to you about, which okay. is really rude to do in this meeting situation. <laughs> <laughs> but what about, what about the senior center parking lot? Because it's public. It's not always full. It's not full very often. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Yeah, and and the, you know if you were to have a, a, put one there, it would be access. You know, people could access it from the from the, certainly the schools or town or whatever. I mean, I'm just or the library or the library or whatever. Well, both of that 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 isn't that's both those things are incorrect. This lot fills up. Sometimes when we have those meetings, we have um, public health meetings sometimes, and we have those insurance meetings, and there you can't find a space. I mean, this whole sure. block fills up. Not often, not right, often. Right, no, no. And then the, the senior center does also fill up quite a bit. I've seen the, the parking lot fill up. I mean, when they have events and stuff, just... Because we did, Lori and I did talk about that. We talked oh, did, about okay. this. Well, we talked about this parking lot here. Yeah. And you know, I don't we know. Can't, we can't give up a space here. The, we can't give up. No, a I knew. I, I, this one seemed like less likely to me, but yeah. I thought maybe the senior center because it has I think we more space. Specifically did and the so. library's talking. I mean, all of the parking is a continual conversation mm -hmm. yeah. about what the library's doing, what the senior center's right. doing. Yeah. What you know, all of yeah. that. So yeah. I, I just thought I'd. Well, we, when we figure out what's happening with the, um, the three buildings, the library, the church, and the senior center, um, you know, when our building assessment committee comes and gives us a recommendation, and we actually do something, we will have a landscaping plan that will pull things together so that the parking is not just random either. Everything right. will be pulled together. We're going to have. You know, so walking keep trail it, keep, around. I mean, everything will be our, landscape. Right. On our list and then of, we'll have yeah. spots for all these things right. down the line. Um, yeah. But we have to figure out building use and what we're doing with the buildings and stuff like that. And that's going to happen the next year or two. Can I, can I just ask a kind of an unusual question? But can the charger stations be moved? Can they be once? I mean, I know you're trenching them and you're connecting them, so yeah. it's a lot to do it. Yeah. So it's once they're there, yeah. yeah. I can yeah. tell you that's right one now, of the things that we are in such a transition. I mean, I think the Leary Law is probably the safest place because mm -hmm. we all, I, I think, too. recognize I that too, it's going to stay. This is this is going to change because it's all it's all chopped up. So yeah. right, and we need to have more flow and just. 
more attractiveness. We're the, making it attractive. The equipment is easily moved, but you've got a pipe in the yeah. ground and right. feeding yeah, over. And if service. I remember right, the green in Greenfield, they actually uh, just not far from it put a um, a power box. It's closed up. I don't know what's in it, but it seems like it might be the meter box and breaker mm -hmm. for those. Yeah. So if, if it's like the Leary lot, they may need to install that. Right. If it's close enough to a building, it may use uh, um, just a panel in the utility room of the building that it's near. Right. Okay. okay. So, so as far as Darius's first question, um, who is paying for the physical charging stations? Um, is it realistic that we could come up with $10,000? No. Or no, we don't really have any kind of... I think it needs to go, you know... Uh, my guess is that it would be an article on a special town meeting or a, or a town meeting, and it would. And if there's a large cost, then it would want to go through the capital improvement planning committee. But I don't think I don't know if it's going to reach that volume or not, which is ten thousand dollars. So it oh, depends on how you group close. it. Yeah. So well, that would be for all three. But correct. But you're talking about if, you just did if you're talking about it frontier. Mm -hmm. That then wouldn't that that a, that involves four towns and. It does. And whoever owns that it's property, and it's, it's much more it's, complicated. It's a district, Unit yeah. 38 district. Right, that's so what four I mean. towns. Yep. Yep. That's a little so more tricky it's to not, figure out. It, that isn't related to a special town meeting in Deerfield. That's a whole different conversation. Correct. No, which is we why 50%. Which is why we um, thought we would talk with um, the elementary school, just for the ease of one town. Mm -hmm. um, but Tina Jem feels like it would really be hard to give up parking spaces. I mean, I guess this is the other part of the issue. It, I mean, if you knew somebody at the school was gonna park, in, um, park there anyway, then you're not giving up a parking space, right. you're just adding a charger. Right. But she wasn't confident that they had people driving electric vehicles there. I think at the, this time. it was at so Frontier. So maybe that's a survey, that we, a I, second survey. Yeah, I did include it with them, but I didn't have them specify which school they went to, because oh. I added yeah. that at the last minute to include them. Yeah, um, so but a little more she might research, know. yeah. She, she might know. So, okay, I'm, I'm willing to go to the um, school committee meetings mm -hmm. and just present what I know, and yep. um, I certainly could hand, you know, information over to Diana and M.A. and maybe Allison LaRose can help us um, a little bit later on. But um, yeah, and we have some some people in Amherst and uh, D.A. that can I think give it's us a, information. It's an important thing to undertake. It's you know it's a change in our society, and it, you know it only benefits us all with climate change to start moving this direction. So you know I, I think it's worthwhile doing. I just want to make sure we do it correctly and plan for it and get you know, the budget, and get the people supporting it. So it's not, you know, we don't have multiple questions when it comes up for a Warren article. We, we've we answered those things ahead of time. So it takes a little bit of groundwork, which you've been doing a ton of, and we just kind of get that out there to everybody and we move forward. Okay, so let me just make, oh, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, let me just make sure that I'm summarizing things correctly. Would it, that we, we could go ahead on the Leary lot, but maybe we should wait to find out what the, reception at the school committee meeting is before and if it's kind of not not ready yet for that then after that time we could go through with um, the Leary lot and maybe in the meantime I can have the person from every source come out and, mm -hmm. and just take a peek and see if he thinks it would be yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's okay oh. to preliminarily go ahead right you know and get the information get further information on the Leary lot and then um, mm -hmm. but we Kevin is correct we need to be realistic about you know the workload um, you know, the additional um, work that the, would be responsible, the highway department would be responsible for and stuff like that. I mean, we need to sort all that out. So this isn't like a new information. Okay. One of the areas that kind of concerns me a little bit, especially if we're talking the uh, elementary school, uh, you're talking 1,000 feet of trenching? Yeah, that's a lot of trenching over there. That's a lot of trenching. And now you're talking about across our road. You've got granite curbs. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a just here, dig a quick little ditch and throw a piece of pipe in. It, it's something that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's things that can be done, but yeah. it can't be just, oh, yeah, here, here, go do that, and you should be done in 20 minutes. Yeah. And I just want to make sure everybody's well That's aware. A long yes. distance. I, I think what, what, I would, what I was going to check with Kevin and see what, what he thought about is 
is in terms of the one in the Leary lot, we could talk to the engineer that's working on the complete streets right. plan and, and have him, you know, basically consider that in, in mm -hmm. that space and put that as part of our well, there's plan. Three phase, there's three and, phase right there. So right. I mean, and then mm -hmm. he would be able to give us a better, uh, yeah. and a better assessment if that is, you know, and just. Getting power just, there, I think, is going to be a lot easier. Right. There. Right. right. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. then. Easy compared to but you're still probably there. looking at five $8,000 just right. to run power down through there. But, right. but um, Eversource would do that. Eversource has the. I think so. I, that's what I, that's what I'll. I'll that's all part would, of the conversation. I would, yeah. Oh, yeah. Generous, but I don't think they'd be a thousand be generous. Yeah. Oh, you mean for the elementary school? Uh, for wherever. When, when it comes to yeah. stretching and stuff like that. Yeah. They'll, okay. they'll do some minor lines, oh. but they're not going to do major, probably. <laughs> Are you talking about the same com company? <laughs> I just, the, the only thing that concerns me is, is, is just speaking as, as a resident besides the highway superintendent, um, it, it's a great project. I just hate to see it go, oh, well, well this is going to be like $3,000, and then it's $5,000, then it's $8,000. Yeah, let's get it all nailed out. No, 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 I think we yeah. need to And, and I can see how this can go really fast. Yeah. Um, we like, get it all you know, laid out first. I can do first. a little bit of research on my end. I can reach out to Amherst, I can reach out to Greenfield, mm -hmm. I can talk to their people, the ones that are doing the insulation. Um, the main so you so that way I, I, I've got a better handle on what's going on with it, because to be honest with you, main. I've driven by them, and that's yep. my knowledge of the charging station. <laughs> Guilford Mooring, you know. I'm sorry? Guilford Mooring in Amherst, he was the person I was referred to. Okay. And right. Car uh, Carol Collins in Greenfield. In Greenfield, okay. Well, you're going to be installing one here shortly for the new cruiser. Is it electric? Really? Yeah. Okay. The next cruiser is going to be a hybrid. Oh, nice. Well, hybrid doesn't mean a plug-in. Well, it's going to be a plug-in. Plug-in plug hybrid. hybrid. No. There you go. It's going to be plugged in, though, right? Yeah, but that'll be plugged in so that I'm quite sure it'll be like in the Sally Ford or something like that. Oh, yeah. It'll be in the cruiser. You'll be <laughs> You would have your own. Right. No. <laughs> right. You won't have to wait in line at the elementary school. Right. But what I'm getting at is it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be where you'd have a, a stanchion somewhere out in the middle of the parking lot. So right. I'm no. sure it's going to okay. be yeah. tight to the building where these people park in the whole area. Right. So. I'm just going to take one question from the audience. The only thing I want to make sure is you're talking about one stand, one location right now. Right. As the future moves on, like Trevor mentioned, coming from California. I yeah. California. <laughs> You're talking about one stanchion now, but as time goes on, when I was in the General Orders corporate program, I was involved a little bit with the EV1 program. You guys probably remember a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. But you're going to start off with one stanchion, you're going to need to expand. So as you're talking about power supply, you want to make sure you have capability. that you can potentially add additional Very good devices point. in that location. Mm -hmm. So pre-plan for mm -hmm. more. Yep. Very good point. Good thought. That is a good point. In so, reality, probably within five years, every parking lot in the area is going to have these stanchions. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And probably, they'll probably do away with the EV on the ground because there's going to be so many of them. Mm -hmm. yep. So. Be charging stations like your cell phone. Yeah. So. <laughs> <be nice. laughs> I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So more info, come back to us and. Keep rolling with Kevin. Okay, so then the next thing I guess is um, I'll, I'll get some more information from Eversource and then I will um, present more yeah. Um, at, well, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Well, um, yeah. I, I, I would, well, Laurie, it would be really important to get uh, nail down Eversource. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I think optimistically they're going to do it, fine. But I want it in writing that they're actually going to do what they're going to do. You know. Well, that, that, I think that would Based take us spot. actually applying for the grant. Yes, um, yep. but if, you know, I... He might be willing to come out since he lives in yeah. Shelburne and just take a look at the place. Yeah. He didn't I, answer I, that yet, but... <laughs> I, I just don't, you know, what are they exactly going to do right. and, right. you know, What stuff. are we stuck with? When, uh, they, yeah. when they say Absolutely. they'll run the lines, does that mean the conduit has to be there ahead of time? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 there's all sorts of questions. Yes. My, 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 my interaction with, over the years with Eversource has not been 100% positive. So. Really? <laughs> you don't you say. Don't have, so. if, if you can't get the person from Shelburne to let me know, because we've got all the relations people that I deal with mm -hmm. down in, in Hatfield or mm -hmm. Hadley. They've been very good. Anytime nice. I pick up the phone, anytime I email, it's the same day I get response back. Great. Or the other. Even great. though there's I'm been gonna, a change um, of personnel, we do, we do have our outreach person who is excellent. Mm -hmm. So, right. and it has Melissa, been. 
Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I'll send you this. Um, this is so I would, okay. just, I would just like to thank Lori for doing yes. all the work oh, that she Lori has done. She's not yeah. listening, so, you know. <laughs> thank you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I but she's that. been great. I will, I will she's help. really carried this And it's ball. wonderful That's that great. we have this grant, a little grant opportunity to get okay. started. Solar canopy. Solar canopy. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. And then the, 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 I can't imagine the teachers would mind that too much, being able to park underneath and not have I, to. I'm very anxious to have that I can see the fighting starting now. Yeah. I want to see four stations today, with seven you? teachers fighting for it with the, the film of it. <laughs> well, that, and now have everyone show up early to get those parking. Cars. That's right. Just not, no, okay. Not anybody, thank you. Yeah. Not, not yet. Not yet. I'll check again. All right. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Our next. Um, yes. What's that? Okay. Thing. Thank you. Yes. Get some rest. Thank you for all your work. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So, and Roger, remember I told you Roger had some questions about this. Uh, yes. Can we, now. can we get um, I mean, you can 710, move. we're late on it, and then we'll, oh, sure. then we'll have yeah, plenty no, of time. So, you know. Brian, do you uh, want to come up? I just didn't want to, I know he, what did Roger I didn't know he missed him, so. Uh, Sewer, I think. Okay. Keep my phone, I've known that. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi. Very good. So, uh, we were... Brian, you have to introduce yourself. Yes, please. Yep. Brian Arthton, uh, Two Feathers Restorations and Design here in Deerfield. So we had taken, I guess, the week or two since we last met, and yep. we were kind of gathering up some information on what we were going to need, what you were going to need to move forward with the Class Two license. Um, um, I think we've had our building inspector out to visit with you and I was busy, so he just said hi, introduced the new guy, and said hi, and they were, so they're walking and they, around. They, they and I had the customers building. come in, so they said, "Oh, we'll talk to you later." So. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so I understand I they, that they walked yeah, around. They were they were assessing the building for whether the repairs were going on or were you set up for repairs. We yep. understand that's, that's not fine. the case. Um, and um, I didn't see any reason not to move forward with a um, approval of a class two. I agree. Um, the only thing we need, I want to do, Brian, and we didn't, I, this is my fault, I should have mentioned it to you today, but just let's get an updated application from you. That's fine. And then, of course, we need the bond again, which I know you have. Um, you, mentioned you guys have that on file we have it on for file. this okay. year already. It's all paid it for and done. Yeah. Right. I didn't look today. Yeah. And then I think I the other thing was we still, you know, I think you still have 11 or 12, 12, 12 spots. 11 spots. 11 spots. It's 11 actually, display spots. It's actually front. 12. It's Is it 12? 12? Okay, yep. so I'm wrong. Well, it's 12. <laughs> Between, and that's, you know, whether you have trailers on some, cars on whatever, the other, yeah. whatever, a mix of you whatever. You only have that display, that's it. That's correct. Yep. It's 12. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will make the motion if you want. Is um, that what you need, or do we need an application? Well, first? no. I think I think since you know he's been waiting, I would yeah if do would, this, approve this, and the then we'll we'll sign do, it when it comes in. The application will be right. exactly how he submitted it so before. I don't think before there's any we changes. make before I oh, I've already made the motion, but so do we put on the license that it's limited to twelve vehicles displayed? I think you that that's or is that part of the motion? Well, I think there's two things you can do. You can either just put the, the it's limited to that, or you can just put that um, it it that follows with the conditions of the the special All permit because right. that's right. basically that's really where right. we're following. That's, you that's don't put a restriction doing. on yeah, that. It, yeah, because then we're going to be in the same boat we've right. been dealing with for two years. With where the, you didn't mm -hmm. have that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't want to so put I any limitations. I just want to leave it yeah. in um, the special permit. That we approve this and it just be limited to 12 vehicles displayed. Right. As, as a special permit. As yeah. a special permit states. So yeah. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Okay. So Took a long so time, but we got it done. Get one and get all the thing, you know, we'll get it typed up for you. Okay. I won't be in town tomorrow, but um, probably Friday. Okay. Okay. Sounds Touch good. Base. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you for, for coming. coming in. Yeah. Thank you for Thanks waiting, for too. Patience. I'm sorry you had to wait. Yeah. Um, I guess we, we could take public comment. Does anybody have any public comment you want to talk about? Roger, you're here. Do you want to? Yes. Uh, I'd like to discuss the. Policy. Yeah, come on up. Would you have a quick I have a quick question. Um, I called Deerfield PD in the last week. We've had a major graffiti problem starting to come from Greenfield. And I caught one girl so far in Greenfield where the uh, bank row comes into you know, 5 and 10, mm -hmm. spray painting on the wall. Then we go by, apparently she spray painted the cameras. Now it's coming down, River, was it River Road we call that? Yeah. Now it's there on the bridge. Oh. 
and so I called Deerfield PD, but yep. I think we need to talk about doing something. They've tagged all four pillars of the Deerfield Bridge here. The cheap side one going yep. on? Yeah. Okay. And they tagged the construction crews trailer. Oh. Um, so I did call last night to talk to an officer last night. But you okay. You guys might want to discuss something about uh, all right. maybe some awareness and what to do about the graffiti. Okay. Thank you for bringing uh, it to attention. It's the last thing we need around town. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you, Roger? Good. Good. Trevor. Good. Good. Welcome. Yep. Uh, I've been following this sewer discussion. I stopped in last week to talk with Diana about getting some more information about when the sewer area was formed and how it was funded at that time. Sure. And I said, you know, I would also like to take a look at if somebody would. If you guys would go along with it, this last vote we had on it, mm -hmm. uh, we only had what 400 voters, right? And I'd like to see the percentage of people that were users or non-users to mm -hmm. see how that correlated to the vote. It was an interest to me too. I wondered uh, because you know you've said you want to educate people and stuff, mm -hmm. and I think that everybody realizes that work needs to be done down there. To what extent? I won't mm -hmm. even get into that. Of course, but I think the real problem is who's going to fund this thing or how is it going to get funded right. yeah and I think you need to give us other options beside the path you're going down so um, as far as the um, from what I know um, the law that was on the books that we've that was brought to our attention was yeah. from 1935 when when this was all instituted and of course there wasn't a sewer plan at the time I think it was just mainly pipes in the ground and Yes, getting that stuff out to the river. Which I know about it. Yes. Yep. And then um, we, when all of this started, maybe a year and a half or so ago, we started looking at this a little further. We we did because that question came up again, and, and I think it was actually a town the, meeting vote that you yeah. tried to change that. That you tried to you act. There was a town meeting vote where you actually tried to change that original. Um, the way that it was distributed originally, and it was deemed to be um, not a oh, have to go legal to the legislature. vote because it right. was a special act it has that to be, formed it, it's the. Act that's what Diana said, and I'm not aware of that, that information. I right. don't yeah. know how it was formed or. Yeah, yeah. I have or, the council but, opinion. Council. So I know we, what yeah, we had it says, how right. it's like 75 Well, we did some, re we, we paid to do some legal. What's that? We paid uh, some legal research on it. And that's how we found out that it was an act of legislature. Right, but was it even, did they institute that language and that's how they came up with it? I've always heard rumors that it was through betterment, uh, a frontage fee. So, you know, I would, don't have those records. You must, maybe you have those well, records. We ran, It'd be interesting to see how it was funded. There are provisions mm -hmm. there. So say if we ran the sewer down River Road in front of or down North Hillside, um, you know, at whichever homestead, um, there is an embedment fee that goes along with that. And most of the time, and I, I might not be 100% correct, what it is is it's actually put on as a lien on the property. So when the property is sold, that is paid. So that's when the system is being expanded. Well, any expansion that's taking place now, I think it was done by the developers or right. whatever. Yeah, so and the, the they're most recent yeah. one. Yep. Right. So I'm talking about when it was formed. How how did they come up with the funds to do all this stuff? And right. I, I would like to know if it was do, done through taxation or through betterment or yeah. the users that, well, that were going to be on it. Because it really makes no sense if you're not going to benefit from it that why are you going to pay to... Well, and there thing. has been a discussion, and I think, you know, um, John Patrick Sr. kind of at, at annual town meeting made the case that we do benefit by having a sewer system in town, regardless if we use it or not. His, his philosophy was that... Who's this, Trevor? John, John Patrick Sr., when he made the case at annual town meeting and we got the vote to, to move forward with it, his case was that, um, and which I tend to agree, that that we don't all actively use it um, per se, but visit the town hall or town, all of our town buildings are on our sewer. A lot of the industry that has come to town are on sewer. If we didn't have a sewer, we wouldn't have this, this but, tax base and this, this keeping our tax rate low because we have, we have this infrastructure and industry in town. 
So well, that's kind of our industry has vanished. And well, we still if you have really, if you a take lot. a look back, if it was done in 1935, mm -hmm. if you look at our commercial base or our industrial base, that pretty much all existed when it was created, because it was like Elm Street, uh, South Main Street a little bit, some of North Main Street, our downtown center. And You've got Yankee so, Candle. But just just listen, yeah, listen, Trevor. And when that happened, it was across five and ten. There used to be a, a pickle shop there. I don't know if that was put in for them. I don't know how it was done. And prior to this, the downtown area, did they just have a small collection system that went to a brook or something close by? I don't have the answers. Yeah, I don't know. But it, a lot so, of it was septic systems. What's that? A lot of it was septic systems well, in the center. If you look at it that the, way, uh, Dave, you look at some of the property, there was no places to put a septic system. Well, it's just a lot of it was put in like driveways and stuff. But you, you take a look at the Redmond's block. That, that thing was covered with building. There was no place to put a septic system. Uh, if you look at even uh, the Captain Lathrop house or the Bloody Brook building, mm -hmm. you know, there was no spot to put it. So I'm thinking there probably was maybe a small collection system. And it that went sent to, it down to the river. Yeah. That, I well, think not to the river, Trevor. I think it probably went to Blacksmith Brook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm just <laughs> trying to use a little common sense. I know with some of the sense. construction I've yeah. done in the center of town, we've come across old. Uh, well, I've done a lot of digging in I know the center you of town. More than and, anybody. But the, uh, there was the old wooden septic tanks and stuff around. Uh, encountered in a couple different locations uh, well, there was, where they may have pre-treated but then it did end up going into stuff, either I Bloody Brook or I don't um, think there was an area in the center of town but anyways regardless most of that uh, commercial space was there uh, already you know like on North Main Street there was the pocketbook shop mm -hmm. so all that existed they, they didn't come to us and any new businesses that came Hardig's there's multiple reasons why they maybe came. It could mm -hmm. be the interstate, uh, the location, it could have been but, all our other services that we provide, not just the sewer system. And then you get to these buildings, well, we fund, we'll pay just like everybody else does, and all the taxpayers will pay to support the sewer system, the, what we do here. So, so I don't see where it benefits anybody that's not on it. I know you don't see the benefit, but we would well, not you're have... you're not justifying it may, to me, may, Trevor, by may saying... May I speak then? What's that? May I speak to help sure. justify? So um, Hardig couldn't be there. Channing Beat could not be there. Yankee Candle could not be there without a sewer. So They could have put a leach field in. No, they couldn't. So, uh, so the whole nice. reason we have... How do you know that, Trevor? The whole reason we have a sanitation system is so that we don't have waste in the streets and in the brooks. It's a public health issue to have waste in the streets or overflowing septics, and a lot of this town is wet, so you can't put in a lot of septics. We are required to have, by law, a septic system, and we need to clean our waste before yeah, it gets I know. into I'm the on river. A septic system. I need, so, familiar. so the whole idea is that we, we benefit by having a system. We have industry here that keeps our taxes low because we have a system and we, whether we'd get growth in the future or the growth that we have right now could not be there if we didn't have a septic system. We have other towns that are, you know, other businesses that are hoping to expand that would love to tie into our system in other towns. Um, you know, I think it's, and they can expand if they don't have a septic system or, or a, a waste system to go into. I think uh, there's benefit to the town. I can't put the dollar number on it, but we can't not have a system. Well, so I'm not saying not to have a system. Yeah. It's here. We need to maintain. And the it. law that I have right now, the only thing that I can that governs me that that we've gone out and gotten, you know, is this true? We have our council tell us yes, this is true. The only way to change that would be to an act of legislature to have it changed and put all of the cost well, on the sewer. Does it say that you have to raise the funds that way? It's, it gives you an option to raise them that way. Well, it says that 75 are user fees and 25% is general fund. Well, fund. that's why I, I wonder if that was instituted in 1935, did they really raise the funds that way? It would be interesting that's, to see. That's what the language said, if you read yeah, the language. Right. It gives you the right to do that, but was it done that way, or was it all just from the people that benefited from it? Yeah. I I. I would imagine if they went through the well, you're, effort you're just of, guessing just like I'd be of guessing. Of course, but if you go through the act of so that's legislature. that's why I said maybe someone needs to research it. Mm -hmm. And if that is really the case, that should be brought
brought in and changed, so it well, doesn't happen. Maybe but, or maybe not. I mean, the, that's up to the you know, people. Well, yeah, you're right. But it is up to the people. You should give them the option. The argument that you have, Roger, I can understand where you're coming from, but let's face it, 75% of our budget is the schools. I, Dave, and you don't have you know, anybody I'm in the school. I'm not here to discuss the schools. I know, but I'm just saying, it's the same principle of what the town funds. And, you know, the bulk of, that's 75% yeah, taxpayer but, there, where on the sewer, it's only 25%. I don't see where, how is... Well, how, it's, it's how funding you're... for things that you may not personally use. And it's still within I guess the town with budget. with the school system, I guess if you had children or whatever, you could use them. But, you know, having a home on wherever where there's no sewer, you're never going to, you know, obviously it's probably never going to happen. There's a lot of areas in town that's not going to happen to. And you want to do a bunch of work down there. And we need from to. listening, like I say, Trevor, I'm not here to debate it. I know there's some work that I needs know to you be don't. done down there. Yep, there is. For sure. There's, yep. I don't think anybody's going to dispute that with you. Good. But there's a lot of question marks because your last meeting I watched, it was about whether old Deerfield's going to come up here in a pump system. And I know you need to click fix that clarifier. Mm -hmm. But will that clarifier, is that big enough? Did somebody look into this mm -hmm. to make sure that it would handle that mm -hmm. if that did happen? Yeah. But I think we need to do answer a lot of these questions. Mm -hmm. Where is this all gonna go? And then you talk about the old Deerfield system, mm -hmm. and obviously you talk about the taxpayers and stuff. Obviously you know what goes on up there. Mm -hmm. and the biggest users are not going to contribute to it through taxation. Well, they're contributing to this one through user fee, 75 percent of their user fee. They're contributing to this Who? fix. Anybody in that end of town? Well, I've heard that that end of town, the sewer system is supplemented by this end of town. No. Well, no. okay. It's not. It's not. It's pretty equitable, but... Um, uh, I don't know about that. Okay. So... Um, so I'm just saying that I think you need to give the people other options. Uh, what, what you're you trying other, to justify that it, it benefits so, all so of us. So a couple of thoughts that I had. If you look at, um, you know, we, we need to do this work. So in my mind, this is the way I'm seeing this play out. We need to do the work, and, I, and, and we really can't do it alone, and we'd love to help from the USDA. So I'd love some grant money for this. Um, how we pay for our 25%, the taxpayers' 25%, um, is still a question. We, we have to come up with funds. So how do we fund that? If you look at what um, Hadley's looking at doing right now, they have a deficit in their sewer enterprise fund of about $500,000. And their thought was they would reduce their CPA funding um, by a percentage for several years and take that money and offset what people would normally pay in a CPA fund, reduce that, and put that money, instead of using that, put that money towards that percentage of what the town owes towards that. Um, you know, and there's, there's other, uh, you know, there might be other funding applications. I, I don't know, those haven't been decided yet. I just know we need to do, get started on doing this work and whether it's 19 million or not, you know, maybe we get into this and we designed it, hey, we're only gonna do 10 million. I know I've heard all this, Trevor, and, so, and it's a question mark, I understand it is. that. But, Total question mark. So yeah, and, and right. There's a lot of there question needs marks. To be I think some of them need to be answered before we even proceed with some of this work. Well, well, yes, I know. I think the funding is really an issue. It is. And and I guess the people will have to speak somehow. I don't know how. Yep. And yeah. that's why I say maybe you need to give us other options. Yeah. And see how the the people really well, want to get it. And funded. what do you mean by other options? Yeah. Like that's what Through I'm questioning. Users' like, fees or what the people like, that what, benefit what from it. They're paying the 75, but what other what other option do you mean aside from that? Pay more? Like, because they're paying about, well, if you factor in their taxes, that might be around 80-something percent. Well, right, but Trevor, and I know that two of you are, are in the same boat that I am. You don't have sewer in front of your home mm -hmm. and stuff. So I don't see how you can say, sit there and say that it benefits us. I know you just went through the mm -hmm. thing with the taxation and stuff. Yep. It existed. It was there. They took advantage of it. Was it the only reason why they came? They, Channing Beat, I remember when they came to town, the town enticed them with water and sewer up to their property line. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the town funded it, but all the rest of them, Deerfield Plastics, Yankee Candle, they 
paid for it themselves. Mm -hmm. The new Yankee candle out on right. five and ten was they laid they met our lines. Right, but they their lines it's their the stuff lines. still had to go somewhere. Right. 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 I understand that, True. Trevor. Unfortunately, we had a system that was in place. That the people that did it did a good job to yep. a certain degree. And it existed, and we took advantage of it. Right. So the people that use it, and I've talked to people on the sewer system, mm -hmm. and they'll say it is unfair to have people that don't get to use that or get mm -hmm. no benefit from it to pay. So it's, my question, though, you, you talked about other options. What do you mean by other options? It would be the users would have to come up with it somehow. Uh, either you have a dual rate for the more water you flush down or whatever you do. It's, you know, so they're rated on the water talking, usage. He's talking now. about changing the special act. He's oh, you're talking about changing the yeah. special act. So, so nobody, no, but no taxpayer pays any act. money. It's just all solely user fees. Yeah. And if you do it through taxation, the people that use it, if that's the way you want to go, that they would pay a percentage for use, usage. Plus, if you wanted to tax a building, you could do well, that. Well, Roger, the only problem with that is that you have to go through the legislature, which takes time. Well, We're talking about four or five percent increase in construction costs. I understand that, Carolyn. And, but the more and the reason why we're doing this vote again is potentially we have, you know, two to three million dollars from the USDA plus a forty-year loan for two hundred two, at two percent. Yeah, and we went through this before with other buildings in town. It'll keep going in front of the Roger, voters until either you it gets have to passed or this has defeated to or some done. kind of one way or the other. It's or, if or some if it breaks will, tomorrow. We're in. We're in at for ten thousand dollars a day fine for being over permit. So the whole idea is to do this as as efficiently as possible. Well, I thought at the last meeting there was a consent order, and you're not going to get fined ten thousand dollars a day. If oh, it only breaks, if, I mean, yeah, if it if breaks, it breaks so it's certainly going to start nailing us. I mean, if it's something not, breaks down there, and we're we still start meeting permit. Dump, we're meeting permit right now, but if we Barely. start dumping into the river then it's $10,000 a day. And you're doing the repairs under a crisis mode, which you pay the maximum amount. We're trying to figure out what to do. We need, we're get, presenting the worst case scenario, so we're not gonna keep coming back and saying we need a couple more million dollars. The total fix right now, as far as we know, is $19 million. How we're gonna spend that, are we really gonna spend that? Hopefully not. It's up to the community. It's up to the community. I it's up to us that. to, as we go along, how we break it off. I know we can do some of this resiliency stuff that will pull a few hundred thousand dollars off. If we get the USDA grant, that pulls off a couple million. What the heck, Roger? We've got to do something. I, I no understand decision that, Carolyn. I, is I, a decision. I'm glad that you are making the steps to do something, but I just think it's uh, not a fair way of of, of funding. Roger, do I reason? I mean, I had to remortgage my house to put my septic system in. I had no septic system. So, do I resent the fact that I take care of my septic system so it lasts and people are throwing stuff into the sewer like you I know, I know Carolyn, I've heard it. I don't know how you all enforce that, stuff that. That is trashing our system. We, we're trying to limp along. Please watch out what you put flush down the toilet. How hard is that? You have to. I, I know. I you grew know, up on a septic system, resent, so Roger, I know what it's is, all about. Is people are not paying attention or being accountable for what they're floating down there. Right, but, and so in, in a sense, if they pay for it all, they will be accountable, and maybe they won't flush stuff down it. Right. But now they're not funding it fully themselves, so but their big rates deal. are reflective. Joe pay. But their rates are going up, and but they're I don't want to keep you here any longer. You got the you got my. I do. I hear yeah. you. You'd rather not pay. Yeah. Just like all yep. of us, of course, We're all the same. Nobody wants to pay, right? Nobody if I get a benefit guess, from it, Trevor, guess, it'd be yeah. a different start. Right. I think you do, but I know you don't recognize that, and that's okay. That's fine. Can no I problem. just ask something too? Isn't just to clarify, I I recall that it has been a relatively new situation that you adopted a sewer enterprise. Is that correct? That's right. So that means I would expect for all of the years that you've been operating the sewer system that you've been closing out those proceeds to the general fund. Correct. Is that true? Right. Yes. Right. But it's, so, it was always fairly a break-even operation. Right. The but what I'm were, saying is all of that money was never low. put aside into the sewer and operation. The rates and were reflective. It was, it was the closed out to the, the general state. fund. And regardless of right. where the tax, where this law was, the sewer users have always paid 
right. everything right. other than grants. Right. But, but what I'm saying is never... if you had an enterprise all those years, you could have retained those monies assigned, but you didn't. You closed right. them the out to the general not, fund. The rates I, I don't charged. think they generated excess funds. No, uh, it wasn't. No, it was no, I know. Break even. But I'm just saying there wasn't the rates any. rates were extremely low. They I don't even know. Did they even the break even, Carolyn? Well, Roger, when I went to the MMA to try to look for some grants a few years ago, they absolutely laughed when they heard about our rates. And they said our rates were so low that they were not even going to talk to us. Right. right. But I was I under the impression that so they never no. even came close to covering the cost of the operation down there. And a few years well, back, since I've been someone selectman, suggested it. When I've been a selectman, the <coughs> operation well, was I'm gonna passed say, through to the <coughs> users. I'm going to say good night so you guys can say yeah. good night. Good night, and Roger. Thanks for coming in. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> something else will change or, or you'll take this with yeah. you know, we'll keep some consideration we're gonna, we're, and figure we're on. And something out. But do, I would like to see how that, if it's not too big a deal, sure. to see how the vote was, how many yep, users yep. and non users were at well, that if we, vote. If we can, I don't, I don't I, know I, if it's we It's pretty can do simple, that or not. I would think. You I, I don't keep know a that. tally and you just see where they live and you can see, you won't know how they voted, but you'll see the percentage that came that came voted. to vote. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good course, night. Thank you very much. Part of that project also was every what's, town. What's that, Dave? Part of that project also was every house that was on the system had uh, pumps put into the cellar that pumped groundwater into the sewer system. Hmm. That, well, was, there, that was the I, thing I, walkers did when they were first put in the system. They kept them busy for a pumps, couple of years. Dave. They designed it and it was a gravity flow. And the rumor was that they wanted flow in the system to keep the pipes clean. And so it wasn't a big deal, we didn't treat it. So it wasn't an issue, it just went to the river like mm -hmm. you guys were saying. And so then when somebody 70s. figured it out that yeah. it's cost us money to treat, they said, okay, we gotta do away with this. And obviously they plug those floor drains up oh, and then they pump it out the onto the yeah, yeah. ground or recycled. Well, we, were required, or we were required by DEP to disconnect. Well, maybe, but I think if you were in compliance, I think it was more an economical thing in my mind. I didn't think because we never were out of compliance as far as I knew. But anyways, good night. All right. Good night, Roger. Okay. Thanks for coming. Is that on the voters, on discerning voters? Is that something you are going to undertake? Or I just want to make sure I'm not supposed to be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would have to find out the legality of that. Okay. I don't know if we can do that. Um... Just going through. I think you we've can, jumped around a lot. Yeah. So have, I think the, the last item that I have right now under offer. discussions is review offer letter for That's the building commissioner. Right. Correct. And can I put that in there. I had drafted this letter after my initial meeting with Bob, and um, I didn't see it. David just asked if we if I'd put it in the packet. For yeah. I I don't I don't think I have it. Let's find it here. It's got to be in here somewhere. It's right towards the uh, end of the. Uh, oh, okay. I haven't. I hadn't seen it. Um, there was some language I had used out of the bylaw that David had asked me about. I did go oh, back and okay. verify it. I put it in quotes, and that's verbatim out of what it says. Um, um, I don't know if you had any other questions. Um, I have. A, I have a Where problem with the, provisional. I also can't find it. Right off. We hired him as a personal as a permanent employee. But it's, um, yeah. meaning he still needs to get his license. Is that what it means? What's that? Yeah. Provisional? Okay. Yeah, the certificate. Oh, was, yeah. That was, provision. that was fine with that. Right. I just well, had a because, problem with provision. Well, because he isn't. If he doesn't go get his permit, I mean, if right. he doesn't get his license, he would right. not right. continue. Right. I mean, he needs to be a commissioner. Prov provisional just means there's additional conditions right now that exist, and, and that is the, the truth. He's got to obtain his certification. Yeah, okay, within 18 months of hire, yep. And I think he's moving forward on that. He does actually have a schedule of increasing the hours. Um, yep. But I just put it in that he'll be 40 as of uh -huh. September 2nd, which is what he agreed to. And David asked about the, sec the, the second paragraph, the end of it, where it says he may, it says may be 
dismiss. That's what it says in the probationary yeah. period yeah. language, maybe. And the problem I have, have with this is that the way this is written is it may be dismissed at the discretion of the select board or upon the recommendation of the department head. That means the department head could terminate him. No, could make a recommendation, and then he may be or not. No, just period after select board. Well then I would then then I would suggest then that you sign the letter because I feel that you know as the as the person that would be here on a daily basis ensuring that you know things were being done during the probationary period well he only then, reports then, to then the, the select person board. would have somebody needs to make a recommendation to that is that going to you know you yeah, guys but Diana you're not here until noontime and he's already worked 5 hours and he reports to the select board so well i don't think the hours are relevant carolyn but i am here uh, when he works and we have been working together these last couple of weeks and working on issues so i mean i'm not saying he reports to me and he's like a direct report but he does you know in terms of getting the the work done um, yeah, i don't know the only thing i would suggest on this is just strike or out yes, of that. I, I would period after select board. I'm sorry. Well, it's. I'm, I don't. We can entertain it. recommendations from anybody. Yeah. Right. But it's. Um, it should just be period after select board. But the way the town has functioned, as far as I know, no one. The only ones that can actually terminate somebody's employment is the board of selectmen. Yeah. Right. That's but it. that's exactly what it says. It says yeah. you know just upon so the, you know. Um, and it just says maybe. It even says maybe. It doesn't right. say. <laughs> it's, you know, we've had situations <laughs> with you. personnel that, you know. Um, I know, but. When that we have... went into executive sessions on it and discussed the situation and ended up terminate, terminating employees. Um, but there was the agreement with the board. Uh, and the Absolutely. department heads brought it to us. Right, exactly. So, and then, so just ha and then have Trevor just sign it. As, uh, um, so um, just for clarification, since I'm signing this, um, per the town's personnel policy, chapter 35, article 39-19, you are subject to a six month probationary period during which time you may be dismissed at the discretion of the select board. Um, the upon, personnel bylaw says, or upon the recommendation of the department head concern. So I guess, is there no department head for the building commissioner? Is it only the... Well, the department head for the building commissioner is the board of selectmen. That's it. Well, you're the appointing authority, but in terms no, of... No, they, they answer, they answer to, to us. They answer to us. That's it. Directly yes. to yes. you. Okay. Yeah. All right. By law. So if there's any work issues, things are not being done, or any issues around where I'm not getting responsiveness on on that person, then I would come to you yes. directly. Yes, yes. that's yeah. correct. Okay. So am I just leaving a period here and, and we're not? And I would come to, would that go to the chair then? Since I'm not going to bring that to the public meeting, I would bring that. No, because to personnel the chair. issues by personnel law have to be executive always. session anyways. Well, that's only if you get to dis dismissal or dis complaints are, uh, that are going to lead to dismissal or discipline. What about just stuff that, you know, if if it's not to that extent what I'm, is what I'm saying. Well, I'm fine with a period. So we have a period, but do we never take a recommendation of any other department head? We always take a recommendation right. of the department head. But so you it doesn't need, need to, to be it listed. The, you don't put it yeah, in That's why the, I said just okay. strike or. Just yes. or itself? Yeah. Or. Just strike that. So you, period after select board, strike the whole sentence. Because it's, it is understood that it can be a recommendation. Well, clearly it's not understood yeah. because you guys are in a conflict Correct. right now about whether it is or not. No. <laughs> I'm not in conflict at all. And I didn't, I, again, I didn't add this. I only added in this case the town administrator because I was just trying to be clear about that. It says upon recommendation of the department head concerned. If you want to just hit the period at there the end of no that. There is no department head, so it's incorrect. That's my point. Well, for I'm just this saying one that's position yes, versus for this any position. other position in the. In the right. Uh. This is by law reports to the select board. So there is no legal department head. 
one way or the other. There well, is in the else. town, you're saying in your town. That's not the case in every town. The building commissioner often reports we are to, talking the, about the, to town the town Deerfield, administrator. Not in yeah. every other town. Okay, no, I know. Well, you were just saying mass general law, so I was confused. No, I said by, by the law, the reports to select board. Okay. Are we done? Anything else on that? Just well, you'd have to it. change the, the language in the first sentence because you didn't have the meeting with them that I did. So you could just change the... Because basically, I had a meeting with him on July 2nd, and I went through all of these things with him. Thank you for doing that. I'm sorry, it takes so long. I'm just reading oh, this no, through, no, making no. sure it's right. Um, it's fine, Trevor. Take your time. You're signing it, so you need mm -hmm. to be comfortable with it. Okay, so we can we can redo that, and um, I'll work with you on that. We'll okay. just get that signed by him. Sure. He, he, you don't have a signature from him yet. Correct. Right. No, okay, I good. had it in uh, a draft. I right. actually yep, advised him not to sign it. Draft. Okay. At that time. All right. Because I thought we'll it should come to the board. Yeah, no, it was a draft. Clean that up. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's done. New business. Review. Um, Pavement markings in Old Deerfield. Questions? Uh, address questions. So, um, Kevin's gone, but we were, um, so we, we paved Old Main Street in Old Deerfield. It's been a cart path and a pony path for many, many years. Uh, but, it, you know, as our town has grown, it's um, all the work that's done in uh, Old Deerfield over the last few years to, to beautify that, that campus and all of that we we uh, have paid paved Old Main Street this year, and um, police chief has recommended marking the road for safety. Um, it hasn't been marked in many years. I don't know if it's ever been marked, um, but I it's a remember. wide piece of you know pavement, yeah. pavement and landing zone right now. So, a um, couple of things we could do. Um, Chief of Police thinks for safety, and then I think for town liability, we should mark the road, which would be, uh, you know, line down the middle and fog lines uh, gets okay. foggy in that area, fog okay. lines down the edge. Um, it provides a different character for the town. So um, I think I have heard rumor <laughs> that many, many years ago there was concern about from the last DPW, um, or maybe, maybe several DPW heads before. There was discussion about how far they would pave at paint and mark lines and all of that stuff. But um, we are in 2019. Um, I am concerned there. Um, there's a lot of kids crossing back and forth there. There's a lot of people driving. Look. They don't look. They're on their phone or whatever they're doing, looking at their books and studying. Um, uh, Chief had also talked about raised um, crosswalks there, and he's been in conversation with security and and personnel at, Deer, at Deerfield Academy about getting more safety for the kids and, and where they cross. And I think they're going to remove a crosswalk and make some a little more defined and do some raised um, and raised crosswalks and markings. Um, some are very severe, like if you go down Route 9 in, in um, Amherst College, 
Yeah. Like you can get some air off of those if you're not <laughs> you're not paying attention. I don't think we're talking that, um, but we no, do. We're, we're talking the ones that are more gradual. Yeah, more snow gradual plow. snow plow exactly, and you just you know, and it slows people down, and it makes you aware that this is an area where kids are crossing, and we want to keep not just kids. I mean, there's there's all kinds of people that travel to our beautiful city and, and, and walk up and down those sidewalks and view all the houses and all. So we want to make it safe for them. So I would recommend going that route and, and I, I would leave it up to um, Kevin and, and uh, Chief Pachurik to nail down exactly what that's going to be, talking with um, DA. And I think there's some areas that they could mark for loading and unloading, you know, in front of the men. Um, there's, there's a lot of traffic that happens there in, in this, you know, pick up and drop off in the school time. So another option would be to do like, you know, I don't even know if this is a possibility would chip seal the whole road. You know, this was brought up as, a, as an idea and you, you know, make it more of a rural looking road and not what we have now. Um, do we know how much that would be? I'm not sure. You know, I know we just did, um, you know, this was a, com not a, comp uh, a topic that came up and it was about Stillwater Road and we had paved it all nice and smooth and then everyone's like well all of a sudden you put stones all over it and chip seal and but it from reading kevin's explanation it really makes the pavement last longer um you wear the tire tread on, on the stone and not on the pavement so much and does slow people down and um so that was um that's just a question i don't even know if that's an option there or even something we'd well, want to entertain but something we should investigate but you wouldn't line at that at that point no so right. It's a rural road service. Yeah, it's a rural, rural road, road service, service, and I'm not sure, you know, I'm, uh, you know. So I'm not making a decision tonight. I just think we wanted to kind of talk about this. I th it's coming up quick. You know, pretty soon you got these guys book out a ways, and this Kevin was asking, "What do I do? What do you want to do?" Yeah. So I thought it was worth bringing it out to the public, talking about what we're going to do, what we think we might do. I'm sure we'll get some feedback from this discussion. So let's hear that feedback, and sure. you know, make a decision in the next meeting or so. Unless um, anyone else has anything yeah. to add, Cape you know, Seal, back in the day, Doctor Doctor Boyden didn't want that to look like a highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, and what Doctor Boyden wanted, he called the shots in Old Deerfield. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was, I assume, the head the, of the, the school other, at the time. Deerfield. Yeah, okay. A lot of years. Well, yeah. maybe that's something that we can bring up with um, the head, new head. Yep. Is you know you want to pay the chip seal price yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. And there, there's another thing that's uh, another thing besides chip seal is that cape seal. There's mm -hmm. another surface which is a little less rough on um, the tires. It's, okay. a, it's midway between asphalt and chip seal. It's called cape seal. They use it at the cape all the time on all those rural roads that they don't have pavement markings mm -hmm. on. So something to think about. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if it's an option there or what we if we'd even want to entertain it, but. We do need to get going on some decision there, and, and uh, I know Chief really wanted to mark it. And I'm worried about liability for the town. You know, if you have somebody, you know, God forbid, drunk driving or something, and crosses the lane, or do, right. you don't have a lane to cross, how right. do you know he crossed the lane? And right. you know, yeah. we're liable as as safety yeah. for the town. So yeah, because you know, if there aren't lines there, there's not a marked lanes violation. Right. That's right. Yep. So. Um, maybe next meeting, uh, Chief and Kevin could be here to just let us know how they feel about this stuff, yeah. and maybe we'll hear from the public on, you know, what that looks like. So I just want to get that like thing started. <laughs> you can feel your phone ringing already. Well, you can direct them to me if you want. Yeah, I guess. I'll, I'll take. I the, think that's a it's a take great take way input. to start the. We'll have dialogue. that discussion and we'll move forward. So. Thank you, Trevor. Welcome. Um, request for FY20 grant matches dollars and. In kind. in kind. Well, I wanted to just alert you because next week um, or next meeting, I wanted to get um, in front of you the contract for the MVP consultant. Um, we have received a grant for our third round of the municipal vulnerability the preparedness. The check just came in today. Nice. And so um, yep. we have uh, we uh, committed to. Um, it's I think 278,000 we received. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nice. And so some of that is uh, money and in-kind services, but mm -hmm. we have some money in the contracted services budget, but it may not 
it likely will not be enough to cover the match. So I just wanted to alert you, you know, sooner than later as we start talking about a special a fall special town meeting, mm -hmm. we had another thing that came over from the uh, Franklin uh, County Solid Waste District that we need right. to put on a fall town meeting. The right. Have you so, seen that? Um, no, I didn't. So we can, yeah, it's something that has to be voted, um, that some kind of contract, I think, with DEP yeah, or something. Yeah, and it has that's to get on expire. before, it's about, it's going to expire. At the end I of the year, remember. I think. Yeah, before we, the so end of, we'll or, get more info or before and bring it Janet May wanted us to get that on our agenda. Yeah. So I, but I know the FinCom met while I was on vacation. But I was hoping the next time they met, we could at least, you know, alert them that we will be looking for this funding. I think Trevor and I did the mat. We looked at the worksheet, and it was about mm -hmm. eighty thousand dollars. I think. And then for there's MVP. in kind that would MVP. pay for some of that, right? Or is that just no? Cash? That was the cash because some of that is the consultant, some of that was engineering, and some of that is actually cash required. And then there's a significant the amount of money. The is covered for seventy five percent. It's basically yeah. a seventy five percent. Yeah. Um, right. Cost a deal. cover. Right. We only pick up 25%. It's a huge deal. So it's a huge deal. So that 80,000. They cover engineering, right? Which yeah, they, they had, cover yeah. engineering. They cover permitting. They cover, I mean, everything is covered 75%. That's a great deal. So it we is. will have it's some the expenditure. Best exit. But so the expense, that 80,000 is reflective of really our what percent. our match is mm -hmm. of the, basically the culvert. Yeah, yep. exactly. Okay. The design work and the. And do, do we did budget some money for that, but we may need some extra money. It we haven't we haven't gotten like the you know actual. I mean, it hasn't Solid gone figure, out. Solid figure. So, yeah. So I mean, it was an estimate mm -hmm. by time. Of course. Yep. So, um, it, worst case scenario, obviously. So hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I met with um, I, I yesterday um with Frank um. Tom Kern of the Franklin Land Trust. So we sorted out the mapping project mm -hmm. and the twenty thousand dollar match from them. Okay. For the floodplain stuff, and um, so that should be done. Oh, that's right. That's part of that twenty thousand yes. dollars is part of that. Trevor. Yep. So, I mean, I believe it was worth right. seventy dollars just for me right. to show up for the meeting. Right. Thirty two dollars an hour. Yep. So <laughs> we we bill it. We bill it. And she recorded it. She told me to record it. I recorded it. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Record this. And um, so whatever and whatever um, Tom's rate is, and then his staff. We just talked about his staff time to you do the Invite me. I've got a good rate. <laughs> Ah, well, the volunteer rate is thirty-two bucks. So if there you show you up for a meeting, it's thirty-two bucks times every person that shows I'll up. I only charge thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was only charging twenty-five. Chris put in for the full current amount, which is thirty-two fifteen or something. Of course, but right? I always ever just put in for twenty-five because then it, no one questions it because it's a low below the going mm -hmm. rate. But. He put in for the whole thirty-two no, you fifteen, work. and it came back as thirty-two fifteen for X number of people. So, so we'll have that. There's also an urban forestry. We got grant. an urban forestry uh, grant, um, which is basically to pay for trees, and mm -hmm. so we have there's a it's a fifty-fifty match for that. So we got forty-eight hundred. So we've got to come up with twenty-four hundred for that. So, okay. but Kevin may have some of that in his. Uh, tree, tree budget. Budget anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and um, I've got to contact Dave Purrington because Dave Purrington also, as, um, right. as Lori mentioned tonight, he he was very instrumental in working I remember on this that. too. Yeah. So I just want to let him know because I yep. know they had an event on Earth Day, but the grant didn't get awarded until after that. So I the see. event, the all the in kind for that can't apply, yep. unfortunately. So okay, we got awarded just right after. Um, so as far as the, um, I had two other things just as far as new mm -hmm. grant applications. The Tomorrow, the meta grant opens. DOER comes out with a meta grant. This is technical assistance for our landfill solar, which mm -hmm. we are still in the process of doing. So I would like to reapply for that. It only, it opens tomorrow at 9 a.m. And you, it fills you know, up it's quick. first come, first serve, right? So I'll be like in there and hopefully, get, <laughs> last year we got, we did get the 12, you know, it's 12,500, so. Okay. People sit there be, ready to push. I know. So mm -hmm. you have to yeah, be ready I know. to push. I know, I'll be ready to push. Um, so, and also tomorrow opens uh, the uh, money from, for an ADA uh, self-evaluation transition. It's, you have a couple months for that grant. And during that process, there's a few things you have to do. You have to um, uh, accept a grievance policy. Um, I can't, there's a, there's a few, a handful of things you have to do, like three, mm -hmm. 
brief things in order to apply, and then the app, the grant closes in I think October first. Okay. So I'd like to apply for that and do those few things. Have you um, followed up with Kimberly on the hazardous mitigation? See how she's making out because ours it's expired. Yes, I understand that she, as far as putting everything together, she's still doing the update. Because we ha we have to have a call up meeting, and okay. I'd, I'd li really like to schedule that as soon okay. as possible. All right. Yep. Well, let's. I, get I think last thing I knew, she was going to put together all of that stuff and then reset. Yeah, that. we worked. We worked it through, but okay. we still part of the process is one more final meeting. Right. Okay. Right. And Which we were we going to review the f that. I right. Thought. Yeah. Okay. So we need to schedule that as soon as possible so we get it in the pipeline. Okay. All right. All right. I'll check. With They'll probably Kim. because the hazardous mitigation grant is due next week. And, and then, it's unlikely we're going to be able to apply because we, our policy is expired. But that was the one that got postponed. And isn't there another one that's another round that's coming right there, after? Oh, it? Th there's enough disasters that there will be another one coming up in a few months. But yeah. this is the one that we were we had gone to the finance committee and right. pushed off a bit. It right? got pushed and, off. They right. delayed it. And we got the money and we did the engineering for and we were getting ready to apply but yeah our hazardous mitigation plan expired and that wasn't really how many yet. how many years does that go on it's five years uh -huh. and uh, you know i've been talking about it since last october okay but kind of got delayed all right so we worked on it kimberly and i worked on it and went through the whole thing diana um, dick came in and got was wonderful dick um, sat down and f went through some of the, um, you know, our no longer code required stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got rid of all that. We went through everything. So we're, it's all ready to go. To go in the sense that Kimberly can just put the stuff together, update it, and then come back. And we just have to have a meeting. Okay. To we'll get that scheduled. Um, sign off. Mm -hmm. And then it can go to MEMA and FEMA. All right. And it will be okay. Great. Right. Um, okay. Weekly projects and updates report, I think is the next. Yeah, I just wanted to, I didn't give you guys copies, but I did want you to, you know, they, they're here and available if you want to look at them. So um, Chris Curtis is our consultant from Conservation Works, um, did a great job and got our MVP stuff uh, all put together. That's there, um, got submitted. Um, this is Green Communities. We closed that out, and that has been the end of the final reports all been submitted. So um, those funds should all be, you know, coming into the town. Okay. Um, we did a utility rebate that we're uh, getting from Berkshire Gas. So I just checked on that today, and that's in the works. Um, so those are, I just wanted to let you know, those are cl mm -hmm. closed out. The RFQ for the town buildings assessment was published today, so that went out. Right. And I've already received, well, at the end of the day, I'd already received 11 requests for it. So um, the town buildings advisory committee is meeting tomorrow, and I'll give them an update on that, and I'll give them a copy of the proposers that have requested it so far. But that's just hitting the streets. The um, There is a mandatory walkthrough scheduled with Kevin for August 8th. Um, folks will be meeting here and then they'll be doing a walkthrough if they want to of the buildings with the uh, public okay, works good. representation. And those are going to be due on August 27th. Yep. Um, and then I just want to let you know Town Council scheduled the quarterly office hours for August. They're going to be here next Wednesday morning. So if you wanted to meet with Council, obviously that's not open for the public, right. but for you and yep. for any. <laughs> it's, it's Wednesday the 7th? Wednesday the 8th. Oh, I think, or, I'm sorry, the 7th, yes, the 7th at, um, I believe, nine, between 9 and 11 in the morning. Lisa's coming, yes. Okay. Um, the, only, the only thing um, I was hoping for you to do was to sort out on the MVP programs. We're going to be applying every single round okay. because we're in the... You know we're the early early community so we always have right now we have an advantage so every round we're going to do it but what's happening is it's very confusing to brenda when this money comes in and these reports go out so we need to re name the rounds <coughs> we've gotten money this will be, this is the third round we've gotten money so the check that came in today is round three 
we need to label that as round three. So if you can just connect with Brenda. The final report that you have there is round two, okay? Mm -hmm. And round one was um, our initial 35,000, okay? okay? So, or just, I don't care how you do it, but it seemed easier to just do it by number. So every grant that we get, we need to just be a number, okay? And then so that we, so people can go back and reference, is it round one, is it round two, round three, four or five? Because the gov what, what happens is until the governor's bill goes through where he has consistent sustainable funding, he's just throwing money at it and this is his pet program. So it's random. So every couple months it seems like there's a new round. So we need to put in, we need to be ready for our next round. And our next round is um, Kelleher Drive culvert. And obviously that's a much bigger culvert than Mill Village. So we've got to have some other projects because this is not a culvert replacement it program. It is not. Even though it is not. we're using it as a culvert replacement program because it's so advantageous to us. Yep. But we have to do other things so to offset that. So we've got to come up with some other projects and um, to offset the Kelleher Drive. And, mm -hmm. and we need to be getting that ready for the next round, which is probably in a couple months. So um, that will be round four is Kelleher Drive. And then whatever else we need to get with, we need to get with Christopher. We have to have some kind of um, meeting to figure out to how, how we can round out the other part of the application, mm -hmm. how we can build on what we have already done. Mm -hmm. Where are we gonna find match money? Because match money is, is not really that bad. I mean, it's but you, you need know, it. But you, you need still match. need the fund for it, right? Mm -hmm. And we're, and we're and we got to give a heads up to um, the capital improvement committee and the finance committee that the Kelleher Drive one is like a million plus. So we're going to have to come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars for that culvert, match that culvert. But we're going to get doing probably. It by yourself. But we're probably right. going to but get seven hundred ish for from the state so mm -hmm. you know it's a wicked good deal absolutely. absolutely we need to figure out what we're going to do so it doesn't look like we're just putting in for keller her drive mm -hmm. even though that's a high priority it is a high priority and in the i'm worried school i'm and hoping that it won't nothing know, will happen very worried. um can i hit a few things just real sure. quickly um so the rfp uh, went out for our secondary clarifier on monday Oh, good. So um, that that is out and um, is on the Ethernet, <laughs> ready for people to um, to bid to bids? supply. Um, well, it's out until um, it is out until 9 a.m. on August 20th. The proposals will be um, will, they won't be open publicly. They will be. Um, I believe he said we would open them. Um, I want to say it was September 5th. Why is it delay? Because they have to be evaluated? I think, yeah, we have to evaluate. Oh, yeah. So I think two envelopes come out. So one is the first envelope. So companies provide two envelopes. One envelope that we open first, and all of them from all the bidders, mm -hmm. is their qualifications. We rank those, figure out you know who, we, yeah. who we'd want to do the work, and then, then we may open only one envelope or two envelopes or based on who we have, we would open their envelopes and then see who would be the, you know, the best out of those qualifications, who's the best, you know, some, some people may bid not have enough qualifications to be involved to bid it, but I'm sure they probably okay. will, but we'll, so we'll open those and then see what the, you know, the best price is going forward. So all well, that's, that's pretty exciting. exciting. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. So I've got that and I have the um, request for proposals, about 70 something um, pages. You know so. what, this is really interesting, this handout. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this will help. This will try and help people understand, you know, how much to me <laughs> for the cost of the uh, of the work. Um, Somehow we have to get that. Out. I will get this out. I'm trying to do all of that. So we have how much how much to the taxpayer, how much to the sewer user. So this includes the money that they would pay in taxes and sewer user fees. So right now, an average person pays about sixty four bucks a month. Um, 
FY20, if we got moving right along, you know, this may jump a year each, and then the costs well, would adjust think, depending I think on it's expense. Already been pushed back. But um, you know, it would it would go up about um, seven bucks, and then um, and then it, it goes up another thirteen. So by the time the whole project is done, the nineteen say so we spent all of nineteen million and we did the whole plant over by twenty twenty three, um, user fee might be one hundred nine or one hundred twelve, something like that, depending on. Um, what their costs would be, which is still, you know, all along it's it's below the statewide average until it gets, you know, up to that. Well, obviously, we've just spent all that. Not every plant in the state is doing these kind of upgrades all at once. So we'll obviously be higher for does a bit, but then include, it's paid off. Does that include the USDA? Rule? Yes, it does. Yep, okay. it includes the grant. So one oh, is okay. a USDA grant um, of $2.6 million um, and a one in point one, uh, two point one two five interest for forty years. That's seventy five percent users and twenty five percent general fund. We also figured if it was all on sewer users, which again we don't have that capability right now, um, but the difference is you know three bucks. So it's not a real, you know, it's it's, it's real money that people have to pay the bill. I don't, I'm not saying that. It's just not a huge difference. And then taxpayers. Um, they would pay nothing, obviously, in 2019. 2020, they'd been pay a, 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 an average of a dollar a month. Um, FY21 would be an average of two dollars a month. 2022 would be an average of four dollars a month, and when the whole project was completed, it'd be an average of eight bucks a month. And that's the worst case worst scenario. Worst case scenario. scenario of 19 million. What if we get this grant? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, it's not, you know, a massive cost to general fund taxpayers and then again we could talk about how we want to fund that do we want to you know like hadley's doing come back a little bit on the cpa funding you know take a little break on that put it towards this there's many ways to kind of make this happen it's not just one and done we've got to think about it and give our you know give our residents some options and i mean we just need a brain trust it's not just us that will decide mm -hmm. we need a group of people to come together and work on this um oh, i so. don't know if the cpa is a good one to it may to, not be but um, it's it's hadley's choice there, um, yeah. i know they're pumping money into that now so no they're pumping money into it and it's wicked good for mm -hmm. us because it defrays some of the costs like the track I mean that's it's a great it's a great return on your money the yeah. investment you can't get any better I mean, return on your money from that but you know you pay three percent and then you get a three percent match that's just a thought to try and make it yeah. palatable for people um we just want to keep How thinking outside the box um, renovation gonna cost um i don't i don't i think it's not even a renovation i think really i mean they may have some stuff they're doing but from what i read in the article they were just short because of some of the smaller work that they were doing there, but just the general cost for the for the hmm. project was was short. So I'm and sure that, they're doing some. I had to have to get that answer as to what exactly they're doing seems there. It's so weird that they would fiddle with, you know, for sewer users, they would cut back the town wide CPA to do well, I think so, for I, five hundred thousand dollars. I imagine maybe some of the town pays for their work. It's an enterprise fund. I do know that. Yeah, but that it, that's usually sewer CPA users, is right? Town wide, whereas you your their sewer district is like ours. It's just the downtown. I'll be interesting to reach out to them and see what what's yeah. going on. But it was an interesting article, so that was that was something yeah. to think well, about. Well, you know what? Reading in the newspaper, you don't know if it's really true. We'll get the we'll get the real story, but. Yeah. Um, Maybe we should reach out to them and find out. Yes, I think we should. Yeah, as much info as we can get for people would be great. Um, also, another guy, uh, MassCorps, stopped in yesterday, and they had dropped off some catalogs. This is where the Department of Corrections, uh, it's not the sheriff's office like up in Greenfield. This is uh, statewide. Oh, They do cool. an amazing amount of stuff. They yeah. do everything from signs to new, you know how I've been asking to do this for a long yeah. time? Well, they'll do that for, like, cost. Oh, man. They'll do that. park benches when we do the common over. Oh, I also met with um, a landscape designer at the Common uh, the other day. Now and this is worth investment money. I would pay you to do beauty. It's really nice. I know, <laughs> I know. But um, 
So we looked at you know that, but really, again, looking at this, it really depends on where the crosswalks go there, and that's why we need <laughs> Vinod. Yeah, well, and get close. working on that. So close. once once he gets that nailed down, where those crosswalks he, will be, is he going to come back moving. for another meeting? Yes. Yeah. We're gonna, okay. And we'll yeah, do we're, a we're community the, meeting. Yeah, we're going to have the stakeholder like we did that kickoff stakeholder first. Then we'll go back out to the big, yeah, to the public. But I they'll just, do. I just want to make sure we're. You know, they have their own metal shop. Yeah, yeah. They they have their own workshop. They'll do park benches. They'll do trash cans. They'll do lifeguard chairs. They'll do everything. Oh man, I like All these. Kind of, like bike racks. Yeah, but look at this cute. Nice trash cans. Nice trash cans. So, I mean, anything. They have all kinds of stuff and really good deals. So, um, look at that. They have Commonwealth of Massachusetts flags. There you go. Right? Are we missing one? Yes. We don't miss one. one. So, we'd love to kind of update this back here and get yeah. rid of the pressure treated two well, by sixes. And do you have to do well, an application for them nice to come to out, have... basically? Is that what you do? Apply for them? Is that. He is that showed up company? and he was like, just give me a ring. I'll come out and I'll tell you. Just tell me what you want. Sketch it out. I'll get you a bid and send oh, it back okay. to you. And then. It would be nice Build to it. have a, a decent seal. Yeah, something big enough so you could see on camera. Yeah. yeah. It would be really you know? nice. You said they built all of that stuff and just yeah. cost. Mm -hmm. It just it gives the um, you know, the inmates or the correct correctional facility, it gives them skills so that mm -hmm. they can take that on when they get out and um, and it gives them something to do there and they have pride in their work and uh, I think it'd be a great great opportunity if we can find some use for it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's ask Chris if he can fix these. Um, Chris Collins, if he can get the somebody speaker in here to speak. Right speaker, yeah, so we have a lot people, to do. Yeah, so a lot people, to do here. I mean, just renovating this a little bit would make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, following uh, up uh, meetings, we have um, tomorrow night. We have our t uh, town administrator final interviews. Um, we have what an interview at five thirty. Five thirty. And then okay. another interview at six thirty. Okay. Um, and those will be uh, the only thing on the agenda for tomorrow night. And um, then we have a regular scheduled meeting on the, on the 14th of, of August at 6 p.m. We have a open house and informational meeting at, um, on the 20th of August. That would be an open house at the wastewater treatment plant to just kind of discuss how that place works and what the needs are there and then come back here and have a more in-depth conversation. And then I guess we have uh, another regularly scheduled meeting on the 28th, and then another tentative and informational session on the 5th. Yeah, and by that time, yeah. we may have our uh, bids on the secondary clarifier. So that'd be interesting to find out oh, yeah. how they match up. Yeah. You know? Um, okay, so if we have the interviews tomorrow night, mm -hmm. um, you're, you are already in touch with Lisa for contract? Yes. Okay. So we had thought about having um, a Board of Health meeting on the 5th, but can we have a Slickman's meeting on the 5th instead? Dave, you have that night off, right? Yep. yep. Okay. We can do that. Uh, let's post the Slickman's meeting um, for, can we do 5 o'clock mm -hmm. instead? Okay. Because um, we're here at 3.30 anyway, um, and then... So what do we want to do at the Board of Health? Do you want to push it down um, a week or, I guess we can just wait and see what happens. We can schedule it. I just want to make sure we're moving ahead. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to sort out what we're doing. Yes. And it makes no sense um, not following up immediately. Okay. And so, um, so you'll t reach out to Lisa and make sure we have contract or yes. something for Monday. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I will see you tomorrow night then. Okay. Any other, anything else? Public comment? Oh. Thanks for all you've done, Chris. Good Chris, job on thank that. you. Yeah. I'm, re I'm really excited about and thank that. thank you for all you've done. You've been having fun here, right? <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. I make that motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.